Hey there, just wanted to put a little note up front here to say that although the movie that we're covering today is a comedy, it does deal with some, you know, heavier topics, and we will be talking about the fact that a bunch of animals die in the movie, including a dog. So, you know, if you are not feeling like you want to hear that today, then here is the warning. Okay, on with the episode. Faulkner is cork... cork Asian. Well, they got that wrong because you're obviously white. And welcome to episode three of the Misanthropod Movie Club, where we look at movies and are in an actual club. We have free parking. It's pretty neat. Only one of us owns a car. <laughs> I am joined, as always, by the lovely <laughs> Wibblacious Wibblette. Say hello. Hello. I am also joined by the lovely Jubbly Lemon Bubbly <laughs> Drummer Matt. Say hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you lovely gentlemen doing this fine day? Doing okay, doing okay. Uh, you, you, you're right there, Matt. Yeah, I'm good. How are you, Snipe? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I am falling asleep at the wheel of the car we don't own. So yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> well, fortunately, it is not you leading today's episode. <laughs> Thankfully so. not. So no. you, you you can presumably have a nap sometime during it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. I'm can't. sure Matt I, feels good. I, I need all the help I can get. I have never done this before. I'm very nervous. I have oh, no I'm idea nervous. what I'm doing. When has that ever stopped us before? <laughs> True, um, but normally I can rely on just you two waffling to get by. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> is this like uh, you know we get and let everyone glimpse the waveform where you can just see these solid blocks of us talking incessantly and then every now and again a little blip of Matt going like yeah yeah, <laughs> There's literally, yeah I remember like like editing the misanth- the previous misanth- pod and being like seeing it just us just going ah dicks 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 come and then drawing Matt would occasionally be like yeah <laughs> or a huh. <laughs> Or don't know what that is, and that's literally it. It's like, oh yes. I've got really good at making those sort of noises in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, you've uh, you've only been awake for about forty episodes in total of the old of the old podcast. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what we're going to be covering is a movie that draw map picked that Matthew has that picked. We teased at the end of the last episode. Yes, which is the 2016 New Zealand film. New Zealand, New Zealand movie film. It's, it's <laughs> what? This, what? It's it's a hunt for a hunt for the wilder people. Yes, that Written, is the movie. Written and directed by Taika Waititi, uh, and it's based on the book Wild Pork and Watercress. It by is Barry Crump, which I didn't realise until watching it this time round. Hmm. I didn't even realise it until I heard you say it just now. It says it at the very start of the credits. It, it does. Oh, fuck, just, really? I was yeah. just like, ah, oh, okay. That like, was a good movie. I think I'm it might it. be literally the first credit nah. is saying. <laughs> I always ignore the first credit because I think that person always thinks way too highly of themselves. <laughs> She's usually like the director. Yeah. I, mean, no, no, uh, I said uh, what I said. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, now, normally, uh, I, I, I talk here a little bit about like the franchise or whatever that's existed. But this oh, yeah, is, the franchise. But this is a real movie. Um, and not uh, like Power Rangers or Batman. So Batman is real. Uh, movie. So this. So we're just going to get right into it. So uh, Matthew, do you want to take us through Hunt for the Wilder People? I will. Yes. Um. So this film opens up to a pan of a beautiful New Zealand landscape. Um, and I do have a... in my notes. <laughs> yeah, my note just says, we get it, New Zealand is gorgeous. I mean, mine yeah, says, it's... NZ is so fucking pretty. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if you go for, like, film funding for a film made in New Zealand, it's, like, a legal requirement. You've got to have, like, X percentage of beautiful panning landscape shots. Yeah, I think so. And, and that's your movie's fine. Got to be, your movie's got to be at least 15% Lord of the Rings shots, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll come back to that, because there's a, there's, there's a Lord will. of the Rings reference in it, and also there's a Lord of the Rings related trivia fact, but we'll get to that at the end. Oh, okay. It's not that good. Um, 
So we see a, a, a car driving down the road. Turns out to be a police car. Which um, is upsetting for many reasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're not they're not too bad in this film, but they're not the goodies. Mm. Which is, you know, mm. probably sums mm. up most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes not too bad. <laughs> um we see a small cabin, you know, it's got the whole, it's, it's, it's painting a picture of being very rural. It's got smoke coming out the chimney, washing, hanging out, out outside. Um, the car pulls up and out gets a child. I'm going to go with, I actually don't know how, how old they are. Um, uh, I'd and guess. I know in the movie he turns 13. Oh, there we go. So. Yeah. Mm. 13 year old child called Ricky. Um, Who, the drip on this child <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> yeah, right. My note says, kid is dressed like a shithead. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, why do you hate Ricky? He's awesome. <laughs> He's great. I love the character. Not a... <laughs> dressed like a twat. <laughs> yeah, it's not... a gangster. <laughs> yeah, what's the, what's the word he uses for it? Um... Shigsky? Sh- Shug. Sh- sh- I, for- I forget. Shucker. Sh- yeah. Sh- corn. Corn. Corn boy. <laughs> corn on the car. Ricky has not had a very privileged upbringing, and he thinks he's really cool. Um, but he hasn't said anything. All we've got from him so far is what he looks like. He's wearing, you know, shoes, but like shoes. He's wearing the, shoes. The sort of people. And shoes. The, yeah. He's wearing four pairs if, of if, shoes. If we need to explain the sort of shoes, you're not into shoes. People are into shoes. <laughs> Big, he's wearing like a fancy big hoodie. He's got like yeah. a shiny like hat with a flat brim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, um, he looks like he looks like he's gonna like call you a slur on TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, call pornography corn or something. So yeah, it comes to pass. So we get a in the in the, also in this police car. There's a um, child wef- welfare officer um, called Paula. I hate friend. Paula. Yeah, Paula's not cool. Um, yeah, she's awful. And a police officer uh, do we do we catch the name of the police officer is his I don't name think like we do. philip or something i think, I think his later. name is said but i did yeah, not I a it. police no, officer no, no, no. yeah he's actually quite funny to be honest um mm. and it turns out that yeah ricky is fostered he's living in various foster houses he keeps running away and just generally being you know he's got a long list of criminal activity you know, graffiti. No, love- not none of which is particularly. I think there's minor shoplifting, but there's like graffiti and very. He's basically he keeps running away and acting like a little bit of a shit, fairly justifiably. Love- big, you know, going through the foster system. You can't really blame him for it, but they're running out of ideas to send of places to send him. I do love how the uh, the uh, child services woman Paula like reels off like. Yes, he's, he like breaks stuff, nicks stuff, sets stuff on fire, kicks stuff, graffiti, loitering, spitting, swearing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, if you've ever been arrested by a cop in a small town, you know that they are so fucking bored. <laughs> they will literally cite you for this shit. Yeah. It's so tedious because you know they're bored, they know they're bored, and you've just got to deal with getting shouted at by a cop. Mm. But uh, she is a real shithead to Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> so. But it's the kids, you know, kids come, come, come no, no child left behind. No, jo- no child left behind. That's not the, like, that's not the, you know, the saying, but it's the saying. She's like, okay, I, a little bit of our backstory. I have dealt with child services a lot in my time. A lot. And like, there's a, there's an, an unfortunately large chunk who are really like Paula. Mm. Who were like, I've decided what's wrong with you. You're a rotten little shit. And um, I'm glad your parents beat you. But also, I think I should put you in a home where I get to pick the parents who beat you. So fuck up. Yeah, she's so yeah. she's power tripping quite a bit. Yeah. Considering she doesn't much. have that much power. is She's milking mm. what she has, I think. But anyway, so it turns out that the, the, the um, person who lives at this in this hut, is, who's Bella... Auntie Bella, she wants to be mm, gone by, auntie. who generally seems really lovely. She makes one awkward fat joke, which is sort of like, ooh. Oh, there was obviously. a couple. Yeah, yeah, she, th- makes, yeah she, makes, she makes, there's there's, there's there's more to come, yeah. It's like, oh, like you mean well, but mm, not cool. She's, she's just I like, so I'd like to think so that, psyched. Yeah, <laughs> she's, just, she's just really nervous and excited. Um, mm. But she's really, really, see, aside, fat jokes aside... Um, she seems pretty lovely. 
Mm. Um, and yeah, she what they, they, she wants to to foster Ricky and look after Ricky. Um, but Rick, Nick, um, Ricky doesn't seem to take to it and just gets back in the police car. <laughs> at this point he still hasn't spoken at this point he just gets back in the car and is like nope um, until we cut to a shot over the brow of a hill where we see a um, bearded guy walk over carrying a gun in one arm and a pig or boar <laughs> over the other shoulder yeah do you um, want to see my notes I literally because <laughs> yeah. this character's name is played the character is played by Sam Neill and the character's name is Hector I just wrote hello Hector because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like obviously I'm Australian Sam Neill's Australian like there's like, I don't know the old the old kind of like Bushman and the wool jet like like uh, coat and the big hat and I'm like oh no <laughs> oh no that does stuff to me <laughs> I can tell I'm getting on in in years the silhouette is is appealing what can I say right. he's known as Heck which is quite fun yeah. Heck it's, it's yeah Heck well not Heck Heck well, his name's Hector so yeah but they call him Heck because well, they yes. talk because Kiwis talk funny. Not like us Australians do. <laughs> we talk perfectly normally. Fuck off. Yep. But I was like, oh, is that one of the Wilder people? And it wasn't. It was Sam Neill destroying my life. Yes. <laughs> um, so by this time, yeah, Rick, Ricky gets out the car to see to see Hick. Um, <laughs> there's another awkward fat joke by Bella, but I don't. There may or may not. There's there's more going through the film. I think we just have to push over those. I feel like if it was made now, there'd be less of a big deal made out of them. Mm, um, yeah. In fairness, they're never framed as being a good thing. No, yeah. no, 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 no. They are always framed as being something that is is part of the thing I, that is othering Ricky. I I, yeah. I felt. Anxious. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that like the thought always crosses my mind when you have say like an overweight actor in a role or. Like someone who's cast as like the hideous, ugly motherfucker who everyone thinks is ugly and vomits the moment they see because they think they're so ugly, and like what that what does that do to a to a an actor's self esteem? Because I don't know. I it's like yeah. oh my god, I finally got I, I got a part in that new movie with Pedro Pascal. I'm fat, ugly behemoth. Everyone throws up at when they see because they hate me so much and I'm so fat and ugly. And they keep saying, and every time I'm on screen, they point at me and go, why is she so fat and ugly? And I'm going to throw up because she's disgusting. I don't know how I'd feel about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it's not something you want to be typecast as. Yeah, yeah and like, like, he's, you know, the actor who plays him is like, okay, for one, he is an incredible actor. This kid can act. Mm. He's actually he the, is... the kid, he's in, um, if you've seen the second Deadpool film. He's, yes. he's in yeah. that as the main kid. Oh just shit! So, just so you can picture what he looks like. Anyone? Okay. I can't he, remember. He's the one he can. I don't know. He sets fire to stuff or throws fireballs. Or I forget everything about that film. <laughs> oh, um, I vaguely remember that. Uh, yeah, you got like super obsessed with Deadpool two. Deadpool two for like a weekend. I did. <laughs> yeah, like like <laughs> really? super obsessed with it for like it was literally like well maybe a week. Um, like, was it a weekend or was it a fucking week? What's going it, on? It here? was it was a very brief hyperfixation for you. I don't even remember it. So I, yeah. I can say it was a brief one. Okay. I think it had a lot to do with the fact the movie had cable in it. I love yeah. cable. Yeah. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh my baby, my son. Yeah, he's fucking great. Yeah, he really <laughs> I love is. that kid. He's great. <laughs> so, but yeah, just an aside there. Sometime later, we, we, we're inside there. We're having a, a, a nice meal. Ricky still hasn't said anything. He just gets up from the table. He actually says goodnight, which is the first word we've heard from him, and goes up uh, to... Uh, Hector does say, like, uh, you ever worked on a farm before or are you just ornamental? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is, <laughs> which is like... <laughs> fucking harsh line. Fucking... <laughs> <But> very funny. <laughs> um, Bella follows him up and speaks to him through the door. Um, lets him know that... You know, this is this is his room, blah, blah, blah. There's a knife by his bed to kill the monsters at night. <laughs> like, I yeah. loved that. Hang on, what? A nice sharp knife to kill the monsters in the night. Honestly, okay, the hot water bottle and the knife reminded me of my upbringing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my nana would make me make me a hottie. And, and well, I would sm- I would sneak my dad's knives mm. into my room. But yeah, he's uh, got because a, I liked having them nearby. He, he's got a hot water bottle put in his bed, which is yes. an important yep. thing that you should remember. It's very sweet. And yeah, then also, symbol. Can I just quickly say the fuck the look of this place, the set design in this movie is fucking incredible. This is just someone's shack in the middle of <laughs> the fucking like in like the middle of like uh, 
the wilderness in, in New Zealand. It's absolutely gorgeous. The doorknobs are way too high. Everything looks wrecked and it's full of like really kitschy knickknacks that it looks like someone fell like like frenulum first through a goodwill. It's fucking incredible. I love it. Like doilies and shit and mismatched old like those really garish like like bedspreads you get as a kid that were just like shapes and then there'd be a car. And they always looked really <laughs> shit for some reason. Always wanted one of those. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I was just like, ah! I'm, I'm having nostalgic flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to rant, like, rave about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Ricky immediately runs away. Um, yeah. He, he yeah, says, obviously. He's, like, obviously, he's just, he's, just, he's just gone. He's like, oh, fuck this. Um, I will say, uh, you, there's a couple of long shots that you see here of him, like, um, r- r- you know, while he's running away, he's like cl- going over like a hill. And it really struck me as, or oh, it was just a voiceover away from one of those long shots in Last of the Summer Wine. I don't know what that <laughs> would be like. What would that sound like? Okay, and. Is okay. it? And here we see Ricky. No, 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 no. What would what they were doing last summer? Why one of the quirks? This is like a, a British sitcom, by the way. It's an old one uh, about some old guys. And what they would frequently do is you would see the old guys like just walking on the moors, like from hundreds of meters away, and they'd have a voiceover. So they'd be talking, but it would just be in this you just kind see of them like and they're, they're like a couple. Of yeah, they're speak. a speck. It's just this kind of like them sort of just this tiny speck on this massive... How's your garden going, Norman? Ah, foxes are fucking in it again. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, they're often talking about something completely inconsequential, yeah. (sighs) It's just a quirk. Go to a rural pub. Why would you watch that as a TV show? (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Anyway, so, Um, yeah. I I honestly thought he'd end up dead. And, like, like, because I was, like... I'm sorry, Drama. I'm walking away. I just... when he is like you see him in the morning and he's lying there and he zipped his hoodie all the way up to the top of the hood <laughs> and I was I just wrote dead <laughs> like, the dead. boy is dead <laughs> he has died this is a very weird this is gonna be like Swiss Army Man but found family with a child corpse it's gonna yeah. be really weird <laughs> um, yeah so yeah they they find him Bella finds him asleep on the grass it, it makes it look like you know he's he's trekked miles away he's he's 200 meters from the farm like the yeah <laughs> the camera turns around and you just see the farm just down the hill <laughs> you're like yeah you didn't make it very far it's so mm. cute and so she's like ah uh, so if you go try and run away uh, I mean do you want to come and get some like breakfast get some breakfast yeah yeah I love sustenance. Bella she deals with this so well she doesn't say like yeah. don't do that again she just says before you run away again, yeah, let's get you fed up at least. And then he's like, "Oh, yeah, that makes sense." And she manages mm-hmm. to get him back. And I was like, "That is that's that's some that's some clever that, kid that psychology." Is some grade A like like parenting right mm. there. This is incredible. Yeah. So then after breakfast, we see um, Hick. I shouldn't say Hick. Hick. I can't. I can't not do it despite the not being able to do the accent. Oh, um, he's the good cud. He's he's doing just... some like butchering of some animal and Ricky's watching. He's, this scene is set up. Ricky is, if you haven't worked it out by now, he's a very obviously a city boy and knows nothing about farming or the farms or anything. Mm. He's the sort of kid who'd say, where does meat come from? Oh, the supermarket. Yeah. Sort yeah. Of, yeah. He's, he's very, I mean, like you can just see the way he's dressed. It's like, it's all newish kind of fancy vinyl like bullshit. And they're kind of like they're in old like woolen jumpers because wool gets can retain warmth when it's wet through because it's gonna be fucking raining on mm. you. It's like it's quite quite a fun contrast. Um. Oh, this is where we get the first appearance of Zag the dog. I love yep. Zag. Zag is Zag you get is another a good one dog. and call it Zig. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it it suggests there might have been at some point. Like, mm. I don't know. So Ricky starts having a conversation with Bella. She's the best highlight of this. Oh, you, he laughs you have, when you she's... have missed a part uh, yeah. there because he because he, 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 there's the whole thing of the um, heck is very standoffish with yeah. Ricky, and so like Ricky's trying to be helpful. It's like is you know is there Ricky, anything? Ricky is being a cat that is trying that has just noticed that there is a person who is not a cat person in the house party, <laughs> and is going and being like right, mate. We're friends, but yeah, he goes over to uh, to Heck and he's like, uh, "Is there anything you want me to do?" And he's like, "Leave me alone." Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. She's sort of the the summation of the early relationship of uh, of, of these two Hick. characters. 
of uh, yeah of Hick and Rick. Hick and Rick. Hick and Rick. <laughs> Only I might say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then yeah, yeah. The next thing is uh, yeah with Bella. Yeah, so Ricky's having a conversation with Bella. Um, Bella's talking to him about the bush because their their hut is like on the edge out on like the edge of the bush, I guess. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. The wilderness, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> Ricky just giggles when she says bush. He <laughs> says bush. <laughs> Move. Yeah, yeah. Move. Yeah. Fine. Um, Ricky reveals he, he writes um, haikus, so he has a, he has one about maggots, which is great. And he's yep. another one called, what was it? It was like Kingsy Wanker. I didn't quite catch it. It's presumably someone Kingsy's a kid. Kingsy's a knows. wanker. Kingsy, yeah. Kingsy's a wanker. Yeah, Kingsy's a wanker. <laughs> best haiku. Fuck off, dickhead. Also, yeah. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. It, was yeah. it was pretty good. It was, it They're was not amazing. good haikus. <laughs> no, but they are also somehow excellent haikus. haikus. <laughs> They're the best haikus. But he haikus says, you know, they, they help him process things, and that's that's great. Healthy. Mm. Kingsy is probably a wanker. That's fine. Well, I mean, there's a haiku written. <laughs> no one's written a haiku about me being like, I don't know, amazing at sex. <laughs> so I guess it's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the first place my brain went. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this is the danger of recording when you are unimaginably tired. I yeah. am so tired. And when I, I most likely have ADHD. So if I have caffeine, I'm going to fall. I'm going to absolutely fall asleep yeah. while recording because it'll just make me sleepy. Matthew, take the wheel. Um, so, Bella shows Nikki how to butcher an animal. Uh, I say animal, I just read. I have no idea what this animal is. It's just That's a possum. Is it a possum? There we go. See? Yeah, and I'm wondering because that... From one city like boy probably... to another city boy. <laughs> I have no idea what it was. Well, the, the one she gave him was a possum. That's a... Uh... Nice. The, uh, Australian and, and like, well, uh, oceanic possums are a lot cuter than... Or a lot more typically cuter than the other ones. Uh, like you, ones you get in America, an, an opossum, which are pretty dope, but they're not cute in the same way. Mm. Um, and she's actually like she's she's uh, plucking its fur for probably like uh, what would you call like like a p- not warm furnace that you put on clothes, like stuffing. Mm. Oh, to to put inside clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably. But yeah, and I'm, I'm honestly, I was looking at that going, is that a legitimate dead animal I'm looking at? Because it, either that or the prop department were fucking on fire. Hey, I mean, could be, could be. I don't know, but I just thought that was really interesting. But yeah, sorry, carry on. Um, Ricky asks how, how she like hunted it, and Bella shows him her gun, and then proceeds to just, like go into too much depth with the kid as to what the gun is. They go off hunting and Ricky turns out he's just carrying the gun now. So she's managed to escalate <laughs> she's managed to escalate the bedside knife thing. Yeah. So he's just well, she she is like showing him the gun and he's like, I'm imagining myself as a Maori warrior and the bottle over there is a British soldier and I'm defending all my wives. And at that point I wrote um, imagine shooting British people. Love this cut <laughs> And he is a good shot, we see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah smashes smash the bottle first. He's, he's got like a bit of natural aptitude for it. Got the knack. <laughs> yep. mm, he does have the knack. <laughs> um, so yeah, they go off hunting. They um, zag, barks up in the uh, in the direction of a pig, boar, I guess, um, which they chase. Oh, okay. And then Bella fucking <laughs> then, murders the she, pig. She's like, a, she, she doesn't have the gun. Like, she's got this. She's got a knife. She, yeah, she goes fully like John Mac Rambo, from, but like yeah. Mac from Predator when she when yeah. he thinks that like like the guy who killed Blaine is like snuck into the yeah. camp, and it's like filmed like she's yeah. killing a person. <laughs> it's like it's like you see like the shot there, and her hand comes up, and it's covered in blood, and it's just like it's... what the fuck. And afterwards, she's like drenched in blood. She's like, oh, we got dinner. She's just, and it's like she's wiping just her head across. Like, yeah, yeah. Just... yeah she's like, want to help me gut it? Yeah. He's just kind of. Yeah, he, he he fades. Fades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sometime later, it's established, you know, they've, they've been hanging out for a little while. He's getting a little bit more used to it. It, it turns mm. out it's his it's Ricky's birthday. He's, mm. as you said, Snipe, 13th birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, Unlucky for some. Bella plays an amazing happy birthday song on I was some kind of so hard. keyboard electronic something but like a like straight out of the 80s or 90s or something it's like mm. terrible sounding like you had it like music class at school sort of awfulness 
and it kind of sounds like a demo song, but it is amazing at the same time. <laughs> Did you notice in the, cre- in the credits there's like a full band version of the same song? Oh, oh that's yeah, so I, didn't, good. I, didn't, I, 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 I literally finished watching this like half an hour ago. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 if you want to hear a full band version of that song, um, <laughs> it's in the credits. Wow. Um, Ricky joins into the song as well. Yeah, because yeah, like, the, lyric, the, lyric, the lyrics are just his name. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just Ricky. I forgot what his surname is, but the lyric Baker. is just Ricky Baker. Yeah. The Ricky lyrics are like Baker. Ricky Baker, oh, and Ricky he's Baker. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's getting into. And it. Hicks like fucking oh, trying to what? kill him with his brain. Um, <laughs> Bella and Hector give him a dog for his birthday. An adorable dog. An adorable dog, and Ricky. Uh, Ricky decides to name him either Psycho, Megatron, or Tupac. You know, look strong, vicious. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite part about this scene is, um, apart from the fact that the, the 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 actors here have such great chemistry, mm-hmm. they're so fun to watch together. And um, she's like, "Oh, what's a Tupac?" And he goes, "Oh, he's just the best rapper ever and my best friend." <laughs> and I was like, "That is the cutest thing." It made me. Yeah, it's amazing. I it, love it, him. <laughs> it shows, like, sometimes he's like, you know, he's trying to be like all cool and old than he, he actually is. Just is. A kid he is a kid, and day. sometimes he'll come out with something that's just an amazing kid thing. That being a really yeah. good example of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> and like, you see them, you know, being very close. Mm. Like, you, you, see, you see that they've grown very close. In the, you can uh, see that he loves like the hot water bottle he keeps making for, uh, like, she yeah. Keeps making yeah. for him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, this is cute. So it's, it's just getting all like warm and cuddly and cosy and everything is you're like, oh, this is nice, this is nice. And then the um, twist happens. The, yeah. yeah, suddenly out of complete nowhere, Ricky's he's playing fetch with Tupac and he, come, and he comes home to find Hector crying. And with like no ceremony or anything, Bella's died. She's, just she like, was just like hanging out the oh, washing and just fucking like, died. Yeah. And you don't see anything of it. All you see is, yeah, it's just like a completely. Oh, you don't even yeah. see a face, no, do you? Don't you don't see it's anything. All covered up you, by you laundry. You, yeah, it's, you don't see anything. He's just completely out of nowhere with like ab, like little, no warning at all. It's like, oh mm. shit, okay. I, can, I, I I've watched this before, only only the once before, but I somehow managed to, even though I knew what was happening in the film, I'd forgotten how sudden. And out of nowhere, this is. Yeah, I mean, like, I literally just, just wrote, you up. Oh the... fuck, Auntie! Yeah, I, yeah, I literally right? just kind of stopped. It, it like... hit me in the face. Mm. I was like, "Oh mm. fuck, okay." Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> so we, we go to that. We go to a funeral. Presumably, you know, a few days have passed or whatever. Tyker's. Um, he only has. He has. He has quite a big role in a lot of his films. He's only got a small one in this one. He's the um, priest or whatever you want to call the funeral director person, saying the words. That he guy. does an extended metaphor um, about finding Jesus and doors. Which just yes. made me really upset because I miss burger rings. Those things are fucking awesome. <laughs> burger burger rings are mentioned, yes. Burger ring mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I, I glanced One over that I, bit because I don't know what burger rings are. They're kind of like these, like, um, they're like these circle, well, like a ring almost. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. And they're... they're <laughs> Burger flavored, good. Yeah, good. God. Good. Australia, Australia, like, and New Zealand have like because I remember like we used is to it like a what's it like type like a corn but round will snack. snack your teeth. Well, just mean like a puffy head. crisp type thing. It's it's a puffy kind of, like you know how a corn I, snack. Or you something. know how I like what's it's being very uh, soft. You know, you know how I get okay, obsessed with the texture we're, of Watsits. We, we don't have time for an okay. extended Watsit. Like, <laughs> they're, ba- they're basically, they're, you know, the Watsit texture crisps. I they're prefer. That, that's yes. fine. But, yeah, and they're delicious. <laughs> okay, they're okay. really great, and okay. I'm fucking angry, and I miss them. I, I do want to note: uh, there's a couple of like things that you see here that I, I really appreciate as like just little subtle uh, things that sort of tell you a lot uh, about the situation that they're in. Um, that you, if you look at the coffin. It looks like it's made of cardboard. Um, and you see them driving back afterwards. And like there's just, just Heck 70s. and Ricky. And the car is like, you can see it's got like a cracked windshield. The uh, wipers are all rusty. Like just lots of little reinforcements mm. of like, we've obviously seen they, their homes nowhere, rustic. Yeah, yeah. But you see, that, yeah, they are dirt poor. Like mm. they don't have much. And it's just... They don't. They don't out and out just say it. You just shown it. You know. Mm. It yeah, shows. Exactly. It shows does not help. Mm. Which I just thought was a uh, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of very fun mise en scène and background mm. kind of like environmental storytelling with this that I was really impressed mm. with. 
which I'm sure I'll get to. Yeah, and it's nice that they're not making a big deal about it as well, because like you know, some films it'd be like you'd either, they'd either play it up for like sympathy or they'd play it up to like be judgy or whatever. But it's, it's, uh, this is just... well, they do the thing where they're like, it's noble to be poor, says mm. like you know, says the people living on like eight hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah, year. exactly. But like, this is yeah, none of that. It's just mm. yeah, really it, well it just is what it is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we've got um the bit of the funeral speech. Then it cut, they have a the keyboard organist playing a song, which I feel like we should know, but I didn't recognize it. <laughs> um, Hector gets up mid song and just leaves. He's obviously emotional. <laughs> Fair enough. And they they drive home in silence. Um, sometime later, Hector is sharpening an axe. So I so... was wondering if that was a metaphor. <laughs> So Rick, Ricky's still Ricky's there made for him now. Toast, but Rick, Rick, yeah, he brings him burnt toast, but a single piece know. of burnt toast. He's like, trying, dinner. but he's really trying to make dinner. Yeah, yep. Um, Hector gets. So just as a, as a slight aside, all my notes half the time Ricky has autocorrected to Nikki, and it's throwing my brain. <laughs> oh, dude, this is why I write with pen and paper because I yeah. uh, hate technology. Yeah. Oh, but... there's one thing we did forget to mention. Um, yep. We would like um, Auntie Bella was talking about how when she dies she'll go to yeah this is like, during the their chat later yep that's sorry that's a, that's a key thing isn't it yeah yes yeah. <laughs> we forgot do. about that but, yeah and she talks about how you know there's like a big a big lake that's like on the top of a mountain that's like the closest to the sky mm-hmm. and that's where like her that's where the spirits go uh, when when people pass on and that's where she's going to go when she dies because mm, that's where she's from yeah, that's where she's yeah. from yeah mm. which is like and then I'm like oh is she a wilder people she's, <laughs> she's a wilder people I see I see <laughs> you're desperately trying to figure out what the title I meant. was I was like where's the wilder people where are they is that a wilder people that's we a dog that. maybe the that. dog is a wilder people we'll get we get that the call was coming from inside the house the whole time the wilder people <laughs> were coming from inside the house um yeah, so Hector gets Ricky to read read a letter. It's from Child Welfare saying they're coming to collect him because obviously circumstances have changed. They don't think they should keep him with just Hector. Um, Hector says he's going to go bush, i.e. just go run away into the wilderness for a bit. That, there's kind of a couple of meanings of gone bush. Gone bush is like... You can use it as the like another term, gone tropo, which basically means you've gone heat crazy and you've gone a bit bananas. Mm. So you've gone like you're you've gone wild, basically. Or or you know, go bush as in I'm gonna go live in the bush because yeah. fuck everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, very much the second. Yes, because um, <laughs> I'm gonna go bush, which means I'm gonna <laughs> strip off and just eat the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ricky wants to, Ricky wants to go with him, but Hector won't let him, and he says, "No, no, you're gonna have to go off with child welfare." There's like a shot um, where Ricky's just yelling at him while he's in the fucking toilet, like he's, he's, he's like an bunny. outhouse. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Will you just give me some privacy?" <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "No." <laughs> um, later on bedtime, Ricky goes off to bed. No hot water bottle. That which is the really saddest upset little scene. Me. Yeah, that really I think that's, did upset that's me. when it like really hits in with Ricky that that Bella's gone. Mm. Um, so he sneaks out. He takes the gun, which is you know very safely not locked up. Um, yeah. He makes an adorably shit effigy of himself. <laughs> no, 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 he makes a fake dead body of himself. Yeah, with a dinner yeah. plate with an with a face drawn on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the clothes. detail. Like you don't need to. Why would you draw a face? Okay, fine. But you know, like, <laughs> the, another the example of him is, being a it, kid. It, my favorite part is his quote unquote suicide note. It's goodbye, cruel world. I have burned myself to death, as you can see if you look inside the bar. <laughs> With this terrible what? doll he's made of himself, <laughs> which he then lights on fire, yeah. and then because he's inside a barn, just sets just the sets whole barn on the fire. Whole thing. And he's like, ah, <laughs> shit, and yeah. runs away. It took me a second to work out whether it was a barn or whether it was just the house that he'd set, in fire, set fire to, but... Um, it's all, a barn can be yeah. a house. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the barn but yeah, is... That was, that oh, was he, great. he leaves into the bush and looks back down and, yeah, sees this whole barn on fire. Um, There's like a comedic like plank dropping away yeah. from it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh well, time to go bush. <laughs> yeah. 
So we get we get a good travel montage with him like immediately eating all of his rations. They actually do a fun thing here. So I think it's the first time they do it in the movie, and they do this frequently where they do these like panning shots. Oh, the panic where it's like, mm. like yeah, these are cool, for right? Multiple bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yeah. It, it's different scenes being played out as one continuous shot. Like so, you see different people, and sometimes the same people in different angles. Sometimes you can see two of them at once to sort of illustrate the passage of time. Yeah, yeah. they do it a bunch in the movie. Uh, frequently, it's very well done. And it's, it's just a really fun it's, little it's a cool thing. Shot. Yeah. Mm. yeah, absolutely. Um, he tries to heat up a water bottle, hot water bottle because he's taken that with him, but he immediately <laughs> just puts it on the fire. He and just puts melts. it on. He puts it on a stick and heats it like <laughs> yeah. it's a fucking kebab, yeah. like it's a marshmallow. Yeah. And then it just Does pops not go and well. puts his fire out. And I'm like, that's the funniest yeah. fucking thing yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> he tries Meanwhile, to take some bark off. Just not yeah. He tries to take some bark off a tree and eat it, and just does not enjoy that. Because he's um, run out of his, his entire food supply, which yeah. seems to be a loaf of bread. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's 13 years old. He's yeah. been in foster yeah. care. Of course, he has no idea how to cook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he wants to go home, but he's lost and has no idea where he is. He sees two packers of cake. <laughs> it's a pavlova, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> in like a full cartoon style, you know, when you just see someone, you just see food. When like yeah. someone's hungry in a cartoon. Yeah, just that. Um, <laughs> luckily... Turns out he hasn't got that far, and Hector finds him. They they hick. say they hick. They say they hate each other, um, but Hector yeah. takes the, Hector takes the gun off him. You know, which sensible. Yeah, very sensible. Um, Ricky moans that the rain is wet. <laughs> <laughs> he does, yes. Um, it turns out that they end up finding out. Uh, Ricky finds out that Hector can't read. Um, and then starts taking the piss a little bit, and Hector does not react well to this. And Hector's like, time to fucking throw hands with a 13-year-old yeah. boy. A little bit. And immediately bit. gets calmed. Yeah, <laughs> trips and, like, sprains his... He fractures possibly fra- his ankle. He fractured his ankle. Um, yeah, 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 there honestly, you go. yeah, that's my next that, He thinks it's fractured. Yeah, that makes me feel pretty gross. Yeah, he like, just trips over It does over not look good. Yeah. Mm. So he says that they'll just have to camp out for a few weeks. Um... Without toilet paper, much to Ricky's disgust. Hector says they have to use leaves to wipe. Mm-hmm. Um, Should be can... noted that the, the movie is presented like it splits into chapters, and this chapter is called Chapter 4, Broken Foot Camp. <laughs> Not a yeah. clever name, really. I thought I'd take a note of the chapters, but I only thought to do that after like Chapter 7, so I was always too late now, so I just haven't done uh, that. I can tell but you what yeah, each of them were there is. One. Oh, yeah, uh, go on then. So where are we up to? The first wise. one was A Real Bad Egg. Um, Baby egg. Chapter two uh, is another door, which is referencing the bad metaphor that Taika Waititi oh, yeah, has. Yeah, you, have to, you have to go and through a door to find another door. Chapter three door is, is goodbye, Jesus. Ricky Baker, and oh, yeah. chapter four is because he is he camp. obviously burned himself to death. Yeah, because he says he does say goodbye, Ricky Baker, when he burns the uh, very realistic effigy of himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there you, go. you, you can love... jump in with the chapters then. With okay, I'll, I'll I'll let you know whenever a new yeah. chapter comes up. You also see uh, uh, while they're at the uh, at the camp uh, that they've they've made. Uh, you see that Heck is um, drawing in a little notebook, and he is uh, even though you know he, he can't write. He can't write or read, but he can draw quite well because he's drawing Bella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which honestly, her cheekbones weren't that impressive. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Oh Jesus! <laughs> um, you also see Ricky going out hunting uh, and failing dismally to shoot a bird. <laughs> yeah. really pretty oh, we've, we've, we've before before that camp bit. There's a there's a little bit where we see um we see Paula, the child welfare person. Mm. Um, oh find, God, yeah. And Finds the, and, Ricky's and, dead body. Yeah. And so the Andy, the police, the, the police officer, who might might be called Andy. I thought, okay. Um, I wrote Andy with a question mark. I can't remember if we found that <laughs> or not. Yeah. Um, He's named Andy now. Yeah, they're they're investigating the burned down barn, and they find the. Fake body, which the face hasn't even burnt for, so it's just, it's got a, it's got like a, on face. a scorch on it, but it's obviously completely yeah. fine. Yeah. And, and the, the cop's like, "What's?" He's like, "So is is that the body?" And she's like, "Hmm," and rubs the plate, and is like, "No, <laughs> it's a fucking plate." <laughs> she's like, <laughs> "She's like, oh, we need to call the cops," and he's like, "I'm a cop," and she's like, "No, yeah, we need she, to call the real cops." The real yeah. police. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, back at the camp, yeah, you see you see Hector drawing. Ricky is um pretending he's wearing a Walkman and just doing some well, he sees it as excellent dancing. It's, it does the thing where you like you hear the music and you see him like doing amazing throwing some moves and yeah. then the camera like steps back a bit 
and there's no music and he's just doing some pretty shitty dancing. And he's just being a weirdo. Yeah, yeah which is great. Whilst Hector looks on just like, what the fuck is going, <laughs> going on here? Going on here? Well, like, oh, yeah. it's the MySpace is driving yeah. the kids yeah. crazy. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, he takes he takes the gun and Tupac and goes and tries to shoot a bird, but doesn't doesn't get it. He comes back and Hector, despite having a fractured ankle and no gun, has managed to catch this well a big slug, as, as, as Ricky nice. calls it, an eel. Um, somehow and they talk, and when Ricky asks how, Hector talks about the knack. And it's all about making decisions and surviving in the wild, which Hector obviously thinks he has and thinks Ricky hasn't. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is pretty big for a man who got humbled by a tree root, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, I, I know he was blinded by the need to choke out a 13-year-old boy. We've all been there. I get it. Um, in incredibly bad timing to that statement, uh, this is also <sighs> where we get uh, told, uh, Ricky talks about his, uh, you know, about dealing with death. Yeah, he asks, um, he's like, yeah. He, he asks Hector if he's still processing the loss of Bella. And Hector's like, what the fuck is processing? <laughs> and then Ricky says, yeah, he knows about, you know, he's had friends who's died and talks about his friend Amber. And it's, yeah, pretty brutal. This this is going to have to be in the um, the trigger warnings Content up front. Content warning, yeah. Um, talks about how they went to a new family and the dad was, I can't remember how exactly he phrases it, but the dad the way was it's phrased, doing stuff. Which I think is very important, yeah. the way yeah. he tells it, because this is what he would have been told yeah. and overheard in the foster system, which is she made up a bunch of stories about the dad, which she obviously did fucking mm. not. But yeah. that's how it's being discussed. Yeah. And then she just ended up dead and no one would tell me. Yeah, so it's Which is like, okay, you, you know that, like, what the fuck violent. happened there. And it's like, and the fact that he's using a language that he's obviously heard adults around him use is like... That's really upsetting. Yeah, you get a lot of little glimpses into how hard and like upsetting his yeah. life has been. Up and yeah, he point. doesn't seem obviously he's he is traumatized by this and to everything, but he doesn't on the surface. It's not a big deal to him, which sort of gives you an idea of how normalized that sort of thing is, because mm-hmm. he's obviously upset by it a bit, but it's not like as shocking to him as it is to us. Yeah, which sort of like yeah, exactly. oh shit, yeah, you've been through a lot, dude. Mm. Um, which is like okay then like we'll just like blah everything's fine and then have something like a fucking like that drop like a lead weight and you're like oh my god okay (laughs) i mean i do think it's done quite well it they could have been very gratuitous and gross with it oh you know it's yeah it's yeah yeah but they but they do do well to just kind of like portray just the horror yeah in his not indifference but in his lack of a "Quote unquote normal reaction." So yeah, that was that was quite well done. Mm. Yeah. So sometime later, Hector's foot's you know better enough that they can leave the camp. Um, they find an abandoned hut with bed and books and importantly toilet paper. Yep. Yep. Um, it's like a hunter's hut. Like, it's yeah, like it's a like a uh, t- um, what are they called? Bothy type thing. It'd be a bothy yeah. in Scotland, but I've forgotten the name for them in New Zealand. But. Mm. Just a yeah, hook that you can it. like, if you're out in the in the bush, you can just use it. If you you know, and it's like suddenly because you know it's suddenly it's like rain comes in and it's a storm, you can go and find one of these. Yeah. Um, um, there's also a missing persons poster on on the wall with their faces on. Turns out they've been missing for six weeks. So that gives you a bit of a time frame for how long they've been. Out in the I, I will say it, it is one of the things <laughs> the movie does have to repeatedly mention how much time has passed because it would be very easy to think the events of the movie take place over the course of about a week yeah. rather than yeah. the better part of a year. <laughs> um, I do also really like the line of uh, Ricky reading this wanted <laughs> yeah. poster. Yeah, I've, like, oh, I've got this here. Yeah. Hector is Cork Asian. Well, they got that he... wrong because you're obviously white. Oh, that you're obviously <laughs> white. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. hilarious. He, he reads it, he's like, Cork, Cork, Caucasian? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Has no idea. It was great. Um, the police are not ruling out kidnapping at this point, according to the poster. Mm. Um, some hunters arrive mustachioed hunters and they recognize ricky and hector oh uh, a small point uh because this is yep. uh, important um before they come in uh ricky's reading a book about wildebeest because there's just some books in the um ah uh, yeah 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 and it's about like, how they, they walk wander. a thousand miles yeah they'll wa- wildebeest walk like a thousand miles yeah setting up 
Something for later, possibly. Yes. <laughs> the hunters come in, and I'm asked, I, I ask again, are they the wilder people? Uh, they are not. <laughs> they are no, not. The, no, I find no. out very quickly that they are not the wilder yeah. people. They are um, dickheads. <laughs> they are dickheads. <laughs> Hector explains what's happened, but they don't believe him and just assume that he's kidnapped, and they believe the kidnapping story. Um, Ricky tries to defend Hector by telling, explaining what happened. Aww. And yeah, it's the most <laughs> cringeworthy accidental innuendo. So oh, he made, like, I met him, you know, like what, to survive, we had to do stuff that I didn't want to do. And, you know, he'd make me do it. But, you know, uh, you know, it was hard for me because my hands are so soft. And it's like, yeah. and and like was, you oh. see Sam Neill just, you see the character just fucking twisting and just like, <laughs> no. <laughs> but then, then he wouldn't play with me. So he'd tell me I had to play with myself. And like, everyone's got an increasingly horrified yeah, look on Yeah, everyone's just getting more and more like horrified <laughs> just, as like, he goes talking, on. Stop talking, stop <laughs> talking. Yeah. Um, but then as soon as the hunters call um, call Hector a perv, Ricky starts, shouts up, he's not a pervert, you dickhead. I love that. It's not a pervert, you dickhead. Um, and he's like, what dickhead? <laughs> yeah. A fight ensues until mm. Ricky shoots a gun, shouting, shit just got real. Back up, homies, and let go of my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> and then he storms up, he's like, give me the fucking gun. And then he's like, and then he points the gun at them and is like, shit. Did just get real, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> so fun. I like as they're as they're sort of like getting out of the uh, the, the the shack because um because they take the um oh fuck take what's the it called out they the take the slides out all the uh, all all of the yeah. hunters' guns so they obviously yeah. can't shoot them and and, uh, and like there's a little a little bit of a moment and then Ricky's like. Oh god! I just realised what that all sounded like. <laughs> no, no. They literally they have a moment where they get up to the top, yeah. like get away, and and yeah, Hicks like, do you do, do, you can't be saying shit like, why did you say all that stuff? And he's like, well, it was true. It's like, did you give any thought of what that sounded like? And you see a very genuine like, <gasps> and he covers his hand. He's like, oh, oh no! I'll just say that it. I, I'll just say that it was an accident. And and you didn't make me do anything. And he's like, well, no one's going to believe you. They're going to think I made you say that. And he's like, mm. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, because this is where it's like, it, it brings up, it's like, yeah, no, they're never going to believe me because I've got, you know, I've got a record. Mm. Like, heck, heck's like, yeah, he, he went to prison for like, he was in like a scuffle and accidentally killed a guy. He was in a drunken scuffle and yeah. He killed a guy, he went to prison, did his time. But yeah, he's got a record now. Yeah. So And he doesn't want to go back to prison. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard uh, it's not terribly Moorish prison. Mm. And at this point, Ricky reveals that if he goes back, this was this was his like last chance and the next stage after this. There's no more family to go to. The next stage for him is juvie. For um, like uh, five years, which is mm. horrifying. Which, yes, it's juvenile, basically juvenile prison. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so at this point, Hector offers to take him and they sort of go, actually, no, neither of us want to go back. Let's go further into the bush. So they start to run, but it doesn't last long. And they decide to just... like, because because <laughs> yeah. like like you know he, like Hex got a fucked leg and and like Ricky's just like oh no I get tired easy. So, so they're like, like yeah I... walking's fine. Yeah walking's fine. <laughs> <laughs> also I wrote down because when they leave the hunters, uh, Ricky does the uh, drill tweet, which is I flip off the hunters and walk backwards into the bush, <laughs> which is the most powerful mm. thing. Like he double middle fingers them while holding a rifle in the crook <laughs> of his arms. It was very powerful. <laughs> um, so this this point we get another one of these travel montage things where with the like panning shots and things, including an excellent drawing of them done by the um, hunters in the in the hut. The photo, the photo is not good. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It's like a um, montage of newspaper cuttings as well, where it's like, yeah. ah, yeah, you know, that heck is dangerous and pervert. <laughs> yeah. um, manhunt posters. SWAT teams are now involved. Um, Just it fucking escalates around. slightly. Um, you do see uh, uh, a heck and, um, uh, and and Ricky like just stealing shit to survive as well. Yeah, they're stealing like, them from bothers and everything. Like yeah, you're stealing yeah. boots and 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 like yeah, yeah. And toilet, pa- and, toilet paper, yeah. toilet paper, toilet lots of toilet <laughs> lots paper. of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the end of the montage, they end up by a lake, which is pretty high up. So it's potentially chapter six, close to the sky. And there we mm. go. They think it, you know, it might be a special lake that touches the sky that Bella talked about. Um. That's also where we see that Ricky does have Bella's ashes with him. Yeah, I did. I like when I started. I was like, "Is that something like that he's thinking about doing?" Because I would. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if it is. And then to see him kind of like cover them up. 
because he's like, you know, like when they go home from the funeral, he's like, you can't put auntie in a box. And he's like, well, that's just the way life is. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got, but he hasn't revealed this yet. I don't think mm. like, this is no, just, we, we, we see it, but, but Hector hasn't seen this yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause um, Hector talk, talks about how like, like, yeah, um, that's just the going to the place and you know, the, the, the place where like the water meets the sky. That's just a, a thing that, that Bella said. She doesn't know where she came from. She's just, she's like us, you know, she's just kind of, a. Uh, you know, sort of a stray, and and she, she took in strays. And she took in them. strays, and and you know, loved them because that's just kind of, the kind of person she was. Yeah. Yep. And then I was at that point. I was like, is she, was she a wilder people? Or maybe he's <laughs> keeping the her secret. Uh-huh. Mm, I see. Were you expecting a crypt to this whole movie? Yes, <laughs> I actually was, and we nearly got one twice. And I'm so mad. There is technically a crypt in the movie. Yeah, I know. I wrote it down. Yeah. And then the other one is drama, Matt. <laughs> no offense, Matt. Um, anyway, so we see a, we see a, a TV program, like you know, morning TV discussion, AM TV, whatever it's, it's like called. A breakfast, yeah, breakfast show, kind of so, yeah, um, discussing the the whole the whole thing. Paula, the child welfare officer, is on there discussing Nikki. No child left behind. Ricky, Ricky. Dad, damn it, autocorrect. <laughs> um. And she looks into the camera and is like, no, no child, child left behind. left behind. No child left behind. No child. And she just keeps saying it. And they're like, oh. They're like, she lifts off all of, Ri- uh, of Ricky's crimes like well, no, he's a like, fucking murderer or something. Like, so, you know, after all this, he is just a kid. And she's like, he is not just a kid. He's He spits. He set things on fire. He's stolen stuff. He's loitered. He's done graffiti. And it's like, okay. He needs to be in the right place. He needs to be put in the right place. She needs to put him in the right box. And then she just looks at the camera and just keeps repeating, no child left behind. It's like, what the <laughs> He'll fuck? He'll know what it means. <laughs> it's like, I think we all know what it means, yeah. Paula, but okay, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Paula. <laughs> no. Um, meanwhile, Ricky and, and Hector seem to be lost, um, but they hear a bird chirping and it turns out to be, well, Hector thinks it's a bird called a Julia, which is supposed to be extinct. Julia. 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 It's H-U-I-A, because I looked it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they're supposed to be extinct, but seemingly not. But they don't have a camera, so they can't take a photo of it to prove. And because this is set, this is done like, well, I think you see, um, you see Rick's phone, and it's like a Nokia thirty two ten, and those couldn't take photos. Yeah, yeah. I think all we really know about like, I don't think you really. I don't think they specify time period at any point. No, but I will say from the fact that there's no widescreens and the fact that the fanciest like mobile phone you see is like you know what it probably will be brick. It'll probably be because uh, the uh, ad- idea to adapt this story started in like 2005, and that would actually check out as like a so time yeah, period. no, 2005 would be the right yeah. kind of also, time. Also, yeah, yeah. you know, New Zealand might be a few years behind, <laughs> especially out yeah. towards rural the, the towards New Zealand. Rural New Zealand yeah, might yeah, not yeah. have the most modern phones anyway. But I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if it's speci- it doesn't specify it does exactly when it's set. Uh, but yeah, yeah. the um, the Hewer Hewer Hewer. Well, how do you say it? Um, Hua. Uh, Hua. Hua. Uh, it is actually an, ex- an, an extinct bird. Um, that uh, <laughs> I, I looked it up. Uh, it it, there, it do, does actually have the remote possibility that there may be some left, but there's not been like a credible sighting for like seventy years. Mm. So it's very unlikely. But I can't believe Sam Neil. S- some people <laughs> do speculate that they may still be out there. A bit well, like there's Thylacines. There's so much yeah. fucking bush out there. Who knows? Yeah, it's no. like it's like the outback in Australia is so fucking vast. There could be there there could be yowies out there. We mm. just don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it was like um, 1910 is the last like actually 100% verified around. It was uh, 1907, maybe. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm remembering a Wikipedia page I read yeah, like yeah. an hour ago. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. So they keep going without being. You know, they can't do anything with this bird. They keep going and they come to a hut. So Hector throws a stick onto the roof just to see if anyone comes out. Seems that fucking quiet. triggered me because we used to have a. a uh, uh, what are the corrugated uh, roof? Roof and like hearing thunderstorms on that is something so wired into my brain. So hearing <laughs> something clatter down a roof like that, I was like, oh, I've been activated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they go in, seeing it, thinking it's all clear, and they find some books, and then suddenly a body in a bed. It turns out to be a ranger, and they think he's dead, but then all of a sudden. 
you get a big gasp from him and it you know he's just injured or ill or something yeah, he's um, sick in there. They don't really know what's wrong with him. No, they don't know. So um, they, you know, one of them has to stay with, stay with, and one has to go and find help. So Ricky goes off to find some. Um, does he say bush people, or have I wrote bush people? <laughs> some locals in the middle of the bush. Well, Hector yeah. stays with the ranger. Um, and... uh, there is a little point here that I do actually quite like. You see that because uh, Ricky's um, grabbing some books from the shelf, but he's swapping them with a book that he's taken from somewhere else. Yeah. So like, oh, so really it's, thoughtful. So it's the thing of that he's not like I, you kind of it kind of gives the impression that he's not thinking of that of that he's stealing people's books to read. He's, he's borrowing them. He's borrowing them and he's like swapping them for another one. So he's like, there's an equal exchange thing going yeah. on. Huh. I mean, to be fair, you think like about that. it, you get hunting and stuff that you'd be doing that anyway because like. What's a what, what's like eight books gonna do you good like yeah. when you're out in the bush getting rained on? All Again, day? I like all these little touches that show you that like although he's occasionally a bit of a shithead, like Ricky's like a good soul. Yeah, like mm. at the end and like you know, and that's sort of apparent from the very beginning. Mm. Um, so yeah, Ricky goes off to find some help. He ends up finding someone riding a horse. Um, a, a suspiciously long-haired horse. <laughs> Yeah. I was taken away, but taken aback by how long the horse's hair was. Huh. Okay, I don't like think just I not, the not horse like not like mane and tail, but like its actual like body. Oh, I did not head. notice that. Yeah. It's, it's quite long. Okay, and it's like almost a little bit curly, and I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with New Zealand's horses?" <laughs> it's weird. Look, they didn't have mammals for like millennia. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's why they have weird shit like kiwis. Yeah, kiwis yeah. are fucking weird. Uh, legit, yeah. So why well, they have things like kiwis is because um, their entire ecosystem was without mammals. So things that mammals did in their uh, ecosystem normally were fulfilled by birds. So you end up with like little kiwis and like the big was it moa moa the big like I think mm, so yeah bird like the the like mm. massive fucking birds that were like yeah, the yeah. equivalent of like grazing animals to them. Yeah. Um, New Zealand is Jurassic Park. Yeah, New Zealand is a weird yeah. place. That's why Sam Neill is there. <laughs> 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 but anyway, this person currently unknown, unknown name, but we find out it's she's called Kahu. I don't know how you pronounce it. Kahu, Kahu. Um, I don't remember. Anyway, Ricky asks for a helicopter, so she, <laughs> being a bit of a shit, pretends to radio one. Um, <laughs> Do I look like I have a helicopter? <laughs> yeah. um, next scene, we see them riding along. So like, the, Ricky is now on the horse. Mm. Um, I feel like they could have played this up for a cheap comedy moment of him trying to get on the course, horse, but. Because the horse is not saddled. No. no, it's just just a horse. Just a horse. Like, I couldn't just, just get. I couldn't get on a saddled horse. I could not get on a non-saddled horse. But um, they ride off. The I help. could get on a pony, like a yeah. Shetland pony. Mm. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like if I can um, maneuver my way onto that. Pony. By the way, uh, chapter seven: A Normal Life. Mm. Nice. Um, Kahu is very chatty. Um, Ricky's just trying to watch the TV and looking at the ice cream and sausage and all these sort of things in the house that like he's obviously what? missed for the last I could smell their yeah. fridge. To be fair, she I'm is sorry. like she's like offering him everything. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, do you want yeah, something yeah. to eat? You know, do you want a sausage? Just do you being want, do you want that? And she very opens normal. the fridge and just She she does call up, she has she has called and asked for help as well. Um, and they're all like, yeah. yeah, whatever, pull the other one, eh? No, no, they're, they're like, okay, we'll get there next to like tomorrow morning. And she's like, okay, but it seems okay, fine. Mm. And she's just yeah, just ragging on the coppers. That's quite fun. So yeah, Ricky's just looking at all the norm, the seemingly normal stuff that he's obviously missed until he starts staring at her, and he's obviously quite infatuated with her as well. Well, yeah, because it does like a slow motion kind of zoom in, and they put the light behind her and put a fan yeah. in front of her yeah, while yeah. the flake music from an advert <laughs> is playing, like <laughs> "I love crumbly flakes" or whatever the only fuck. Only the <laughs> crumbliest, meltiest chocolate. It's like it's the flake advert from the nineties. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fucking weird, and you're like, and he's just like. Oh. He has a, <laughs> this this child sexual awakening happened to the tune of a flake advert, which is unusual because normally it's the it's caramel to the ca- bunny. It's to the caramel bunny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Miriam. If it's going confusing to, so many boys. If it's going to be to a Cadbury's chocolate advert, it's always the, the Cadbury's bunny. Why is that rabbit so hot? <laughs> Look up the ca- uh, the uh, the Cadbury's caramel bunny on YouTube if you're not familiar. Yeah. Um... Voiced by Miriam Mogoyles. Huh, yeah, nice. which I, I saw a bunch of dudes on Twitter getting mad that she was just an older lady who just looked like yeah. a grandma. She, she <laughs> Recently like voiced auntie. Beep the Meep. Yeah. I was like, she just looks like someone's fucking, like, kooky craft auntie. Yeah, she's great. And, they were, and like, these guys were like, I've been jerking off to her voice, and she looks like that. And it's like, yeah, maybe you should have some honest-to-girl conversations with yourself. 
and stop being a fucking chud. This is an irrelevant point, but there's a great uh, little bit of video of her talking about how much, like, the UK's shit right now. It's just full of c**t and I hate it. <laughs> oh, Miriam, I fully get on board with you. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, Sexual yeah. Awakening to flake commercial flake. music. <laughs> <laughs> Kahu's dad returns and immediately recognises Ricky. I have in my notes, hello, dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great. Because <laughs> he, hello, dad. <laughs> um, he immediately asks, you expect him, like, as soon as he recognises him, you think, oh no, he's going to do so. He's like, no, he just asks for a selfie. Yeah, he's, and, no, no, he, and then he has like a hundred selfies with him where he's like, oh, get me in a headlock Photo and shoot. you're stabbing me. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, I'm, oh, now I'm stabbing you. Ah! And then he gets Kahu to take a photo and he's like, take your selfies. He's like, it's not a selfie if I take it. It's adorable. And yeah. like, he's like, the, the entire time Rick's like, completely just kind of like, what? straight face, like, yeah. what? <laughs> he's just not on board with it at all. Because he has something like, both of them 100% know who he is, and they just don't give a shit. Yeah, but yeah. they literally say that. Well, no, they're, like, they're, they're, we don't fucking yeah. care, you saved that ranger. They don't care, but they yeah. also do treat him as a bit of a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, They go to bed, we have some a night, some nighttime chats, Ricky talks about how um, Hector taught him bushcraft. Then he talks, then he ends up talking about his mum, he's got, it turns out he's got a photo of his mum, his like, biological mum. Yeah. Um, She had him when she was a teenager, but... He's, yeah, he's it's quite a heartbreaking her. thing because, like, you know, um, I'm not even going to get into the whole social kind of pressure of, like, oh, if a teenage girl has has a baby, then she needs to give it away and pretend not to because that is sinful and terrible. And it's like, it is not advisable because, oh, my God, mm. for so many reasons. But, like, the shame and shit pisses me off, which, whatever. Mm. Um, I'll carry on. But the fact that he has a photo of her and it's of her in her school uniform. Yeah. And I was like... Oh, that's sad. Mm-hmm. It cut. It, it hurt my heart. Yeah, because it's like okay, so you know she obviously had him, and then probably had to immediately give him up. Yeah, and it's like yeah. that, and and now he's just been bouncing around the foster system. It's like that's oh, that's upsetting. Mm. And then you just realise that as adorable and as as funny as Ricky is, he's had a fucking terrible go, yeah. and I feel so bad for him. Yeah, that's and like Kahu plays like she's like I can play you a song, and I was like, oh, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for this fucking. So she's like, oh, I wrote it myself, and she, this kid has such a beautiful voice. And she's singing this beautiful song. And then the dad joins in and yeah, I'm turn, like, hello, turns out he, dad! Turns out he's been in the room the whole time because we think yeah. it's just yeah. those two, but he's just yeah. on the like sofa or whatever. He's on, on the other sofa, <laughs> yeah. just like like having a sleep or whatever. And I'm just like, I like this guy. He's great. <laughs> so Ricky ends up falling to sleep, falling asleep to this song. Um, he wakes up horrified in the morning. But it's you okay because they offer him a sausage. <laughs> Do you want a sausage bag? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, No! <laughs> Because because obviously the uh, the the authorities have been aimed towards the shack, which is where where Hector is. So he's like, shit, I'm gonna and get back. And he hasn't warned yeah. Hector because yeah. there's yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, there's no way he could have warned Hector, yeah. and, he's, and he didn't mean to fall asleep. It was just he's he's been relaxed in a comfortable place for the first time in months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he rushes um, on back. He rushes on back. On he gets a another horse ride. He he, he 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 can't exactly dismount yet. As much as he managed to get on the horse, dismount is not a skill that he has. <laughs> I think that's yeah. why we didn't get a mounting so, um, joke, so we could get a dismounting joke. Yeah, so you joke. could get a dismounting yeah, But joke. pick one yeah, was yeah, funnier. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, Kahu rides off. Turns out Tupac's still still there with him as well. So Tupac's yep. cool. That's good. Um, there's a SWAT team, or as, as Ricky says, ninjas and dire wolves on child welfare. The <laughs> yes. worst combination. <laughs> the worst. Ninjas host. and dire wolves and child, uh, child welfare. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Paula is not dealing with any of this very well. She's... You know, she's gone. She, she's a little tin godding it real hard. Yeah. Um, there's a tech, some sort of tech person there who tells her about Stingray, which is a, Stingray. turns out to be a, a fake cell tower that they can set up to get, you know, pings. any phone, get pings off it to try and track where it is. Um, Ricky decides to, in priority, go find, find water, go to high ground, not get naked. Which is a thing that uh, Heck imparts on him. Yeah, it's like basics of bushcraft because he was like, "Oh, people, so many people die in the bush and they find them nude," and he's like, "Ew." And it's like, yeah, they panic and think their clothes are slowing them down, so they take them all off and they end up dying of exposure. Uh, this is like, also oh. uh, chapter eight, the knack. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, the, thank you. The knack. Um, 
It's with a K, by the way. You spelt it wrong. So yeah, Hector's gone. He obviously yeah, he, managed to get he's away dead. before. No. Um, we get a TV voiceover. Reveals it's been four months now. Refer um, reporter refers to them as as Rambo, and the public turns out public opinion seems to be in their favour at the moment. Like as much as they've all been this the manhunt, you know, pervert question mark stuff. Actually, <laughs> they're they're getting quite popular. Yeah. Because they, um, they saved the, the ranger because he had yeah. was having he was, like... He, um, was, he was in like diabetic shock because yeah. uh, some, some... And yeah, and they basically saved that guy's life. Yeah. And they're all like, oh my God, they're like folk heroes. That's so cool. <laughs> um, Which I think is really sweet. Ricky's running away. Paula ends up finding him. They get pretty <laughs> close, but they're across a stream. She can't it's get like across. It's like a little stream. Uh, yeah, she it's a tiny but type. She orders him to get yeah, across. She orders him to get He refuses. She tries to bribe him with some trail mix. <laughs> Um, Which he considers, <laughs> yeah. but then it's like, no, you don't, no. you don't turn on but, family. But in, but yeah, in return, Ricky has to. They, Paula says that Ricky has to say that Hector made him do it because she wants to frame Hector as this baddie, and Ricky refuses to and, and runs away. Mm. Um, not before they have a very in-depth conversation about who's the Terminator and who's Sarah yeah, Connor, yeah, but, yeah. but not T two Sarah Connor where she's cool. T <laughs> one yeah. Sarah Connor where she's just some waitress who why would she know how to like field strip an M sixteen? <laughs> <laughs> Um, which, is, which is quite fun. At this point, when anyway, he manages by going to water, you know, that it, it did the trick, because that's what Hector would do, and he manages to find Hector. I love that shot, because it's like, <laughs> mm. you see him kind of, it's like a, a waterfall kind of thing, and he runs, he, he kind of pops into it, looks up, and it kind of, like, the camera looks up with him and zooms in on Heck above there, and he kind of gives him, like, the Bushman's nod, and I'm mm. like, oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I really like when... Um... He, you know, he's trying, he's explaining like you know what happened and what you know why why he didn't come back sooner. And he's like, it was a relaxing song and a relaxing sausage. sausage. <laughs> yeah. Love relaxing yeah. sausages. Yeah. And at this point, I'll let you snipe say what happens next <laughs> because you've been you've been building up to it. Yeah. Have I? Yes. Yes. <laughs> do, do I need to do it? Okay. So they have a conversation. Where where Ricky asks Heck, Heck. So, so like you reckon we've walked like a thousand miles referencing the wildebeest earlier, and he goes ah oh, maybe, and he's like oh yeah we're like wildebeest but no we're wilder people and I was like <laughs> oh it's the it's wilder happened. people with the friends we made along the way <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> so yeah they're the wilder people they lied they lied to us they yeah. they lied. The hunt for the wilder people is the people hunting them. The people are hunting them. They're hunting for the wilder yeah. people. Yeah. And See? I was like, oh, did it sneaky on me. Yep. Fucking. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the closest thing to a cryptid we got so far is a bird that is technically extinct. So a... I guess could count as a cryptid, kind of. Maybe. Yeah. A really annoying sounding bird, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they come across the hunters again. The same hunters. The, the same the, dickhead the same, hunters. The, same, the, the guy in stubbies with, like, calf guards. Like, I want to <laughs> kick him to death. <laughs> I hate that man. <laughs> Luckily enough, though, they've managed to catch them. Or they're, you know, they're sat down having their lunch or, or whatever. So they managed to, Ricky and Hector, catch them. Um, to manage to, you know, Shit get Shit just gets real. <laughs> yeah. They keep saying that to them, and yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, they look through their bags. Um, the hunters say that there's a 10, 10k reward for them. Ricky just oh. says, call, call them when it gets to 20. <laughs> I, that is the, the BDE on that child. It's like powerful. And then the next one, he, he says, tell the narcs it was the wilder people. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, heck, like, agrees with him. And I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah. Will the um, people solidarity? W- watching them rub off on each other is quite yeah, so they're, they're, good. Yeah. They're jumping to my thoughts at the end, but th- their relationship and their sort of interaction and chemistry is so good. It's so, mm. so oh, good. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're, 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 they're back wandering. Ricky suggests maybe they could go, they should go back to the farm. But Hector says, no, that, that was Bella's thing. That's not, that's not his to go back to. No, he he um, was basically just like she she made a beautiful life and and took him in basically and he yeah. was just like I could be used to useful for her on the farm so I did that yeah which I think is is quite nice I just um, I don't know the more I learn about Auntie the more I think she was amazing and it's yeah, really she's... upsetting that she's just dead yeah <laughs> um. 
so they can't go there but ricky says he doesn't want to go back to society um they want to keep you know keep out in the in the bush um suddenly the dogs find a boar not a boar a monster hog they found a monster they found a monster hog i wrote it down for you honey oh thank you yeah monster hog h-a-w-g Hog. <laughs> That's how you pronounce Master yeah. Hog. Um, the dog only chase... makes sense to to people that have been follow you know followed my weird antics on Twitter when I got into really watching Monster Quest and they were really talking as a whole episode about hunting monster hogs. But we found what the wilder people were hunting a monster and I made, hog. I made a super cut of every time they said the word hog because they kept <laughs> saying monster, monster hog. hog. Monster hog. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Valuable Something content. Good. Value. It's va- I make good things for the internet. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think not. Not right now. But you, then, I if did. you remember, you should like put in like a clip of like Monster Hog, just because the way they say it is so fun. <laughs> I will yeah. not. But yeah, no. Um. So yeah, the dogs are chasing. Obviously, Ricky and Hector are trying to stop the dog because this Monster Hog is a monster. Um. It, it is just a hateful. Yeah. Helping and yeah, Hell it pig. gets it gets zag. Yeah, uh, um, it it goes zag, which they, is honestly they they both both yeah, it's it's horrifying. The the thing is, in this movie, death is dealt with a bit a little uncomfortably accurately, hmm. where it's just suddenly someone is dead. There is no yeah. rhyme, no reason. It's just well, oh yeah, I mean it, yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. heartbreaking, and hmm. it's and obviously the dog, you know. Getting yeah. Hurt is well, not horrible. yet though, because it's not quite. Because they, they, so they managed to. They, they both shoot the boar, and then H jumps down. H Hector jumps down to um, finish it with a knife. Um, it get it manages to run away, throwing off Hector. It charges. He's Hector's like you know a bit injured. He's down down on the floor. This boar, this hog, hog is charging him down. Hog. Ricky, last stance, aims his gun, shoots. The boar, the hog keeps running. Very, very last chance to do something, he shoots, and the very final sh- shot manages to stop it and, and saves mm-hmm. Hector. Um, it's like it's it's really cool because like like he's like standing over Hector with like yeah you know, like, yeah he puts himself he between, puts himself yeah, between yeah, him yeah yeah so and, yeah and yeah if, the, if the this heart. shot if this last shot doesn't work they're they're both then it would have just fucking taken. straight up killed him yeah, by yeah. charging him probably um, but yeah the aftermath we find out that Zag is he's not dead but he's injured. And yeah, he's, Hector wants he's to, fatally injured. Yeah, Hector wants to put him out of his misery. Ricky, obviously, he really doesn't like that, but he reluctantly leaves, and and Hector does it. This is like, so I don't know anyone who's kind of grown up more small town, but like being there when someone has to kill an animal that's too injured is horrible. Mm. I, I, little, yeah, I, nobody would have known if I hadn't have told them right now that that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> um. But no, like the way it's shot, because like you see, you see Ricky walk away, and obviously, um, like Heck uh, with his gun in the background is blurry, and then you just hear the gun, you see the gun go off, and like he kind of flinches, and I'm like, that is so mm. fucking incredibly well shot and acted, and just oh, per- it's it's an upsetting scene, but it's done so well. Mm. It was a bit like how, because afterwards you see them, they've, they've like obviously buried a uh, buried Zag under a pile of stones, and Ricky's written Zag on, on like stones, three rocks, yeah. On, on, yeah, on the stones. And and Hex, like, what what does that say? Because obviously, he can't, he can't read. read, yeah. And he's like, oh, it's it says Zag, and he's like, good, 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 good. which is another one of those things I kind of like because it's like it, it also shows that like Heck is starting to respect like the skills that. Ricky has and like he kind of just have. kind of respecting kind of like, yeah, his did. his own kind of like how he goes about things because like you, it's obvious that you know he, he like the act of burying the dog was probably as far as he would have gone as mm. as kind of like honoring Zag and like doing that but like just seeing Ricky like write his name on the stones is like that's another little thing of like him rubbing off on him yeah, and just kind of being like, Hey, look, you know, it's okay to be a bit sentimental yeah. about this stuff as well, which I thought was very nice. And uh, likewise, the next scene uh, leans into that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's uh, this sort of thing being on their mind, Ricky reveals that he's uh, to Hector that he's been carrying around Bella's Astros. Um Which I'm 
glad because they could have made I think I think if that would have been like at the start of the movie kind of heck he would have shouted at him for yeah. it yeah. yeah but yeah. no here he's just kind of like oh so she's been with us the whole time and it's like oh that's hmm. that's hmm. nice that's some growth yeah and <laughs> yeah he, he scatters them in a waterfall and then he turns yeah. and just says thanks to Ricky that like, doesn't make a big deal about it he just he just says thanks and then they walk yeah. on and, and that, it's like that's, that's, that's it of that yeah, I thought so her ashes do get scattered in a nice high bit of water yeah. near yeah. the sky. Yeah, yeah. Like, which is really sweet. Um, so we get another another bit of a a montage here. It's turned winter. We get snow on the ground. They're still being tracked by the child welfare and the police and, and the, all the, the of ninjas the other hunters and the dire wolves. Yep, and yep. The, yep. <laughs> um, Chapter nine, turn the tide. By the way, thank you. End montage. <laughs> Ricky wonders how long they're going to be hunted for. When suddenly one of the SWAT team appears close by. So they, oh no! They, There's, the best part about that is that it is that Heck responds. Ah, oh, they couldn't find a clown in a circus, and then they hear them right behind him. He goes, "Ah, oh, shit!" Ah, <laughs> oh, shit! Yeah, yeah. 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 So they have to run away instantly. They, they jump off this, off where they are, and under this this log, and they, you see, <laughs> very cleverly filmed, um, the SWAT team walking over them, and you're like, "This reminds me of something." What does it remind it's, me of? And it, it's, it's literally the Hobbit's it's, like. Yeah. Hiding from the uh, the ring raids, yes. and like yeah, is. the thing is, I'd like to complain. Mm? Okay, this is this is just me. How ha- it's literally not valid or anything, but I'm having you complain because I felt really smart and cool. Because while while the SWAT team are kind of walking over them, like you know, like the ring raids, yeah. Um, Ricky turns to <laughs> turns to Heck and go and mouths the word because I can read lips. Yeah, he mouths the word. This is just like Lord of the Rings, and, <laughs> yeah, I, went, I, and I burst out laughing because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't pick that up at all. But then I don't have partial hearing loss. I, so. It was a necessity for a long time yeah. for me to do that. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, and then Hector and then not do read lips. Yeah, like like a normal person, yeah. he can't read lips. Yeah. And then yeah, afterwards he's like, oh, that's just like Lord of the Rings. Well, no, and he's, next, he and he, he's he, like, he actions what? it. He like pretends to put a ring on his finger and then goes. Poof. Like this to try and, you know... Yeah, and then he's just like, what? <laughs> I haven't watched TV in 47 years. What yeah. the fuck? Wait, no, it doesn't say that, but yeah. So yeah, I was cranky because I was like, oh, now the now the perfectly abled will be able to like fucking understand the joke I got way earlier. <laughs> but yeah, it all goes over Hector's head. Um, Hector's head. Yeah, like the SWAT um, team. <laughs> 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 And then yeah, it just um, it's just everything is very oh, bleak at this point. You know, they're really ne- they're nearly nice. being caught. It's winter. It's it's just very bleak. Mm. Um, but you know, time passes and it it seems the snow's gone. I don't know if it's it's getting to spring or whatever. But they're walking by a um by a little stream river, and on the other side they come across. <laughs> A bushman. Bush. Oh, well, a part man, part bush. A literal I, bushman. A literal bushman. And I literally was like, I know that they I know that Ricky and Heck are the the wilder people, but what if that's a wilder people? Because <laughs> I was like, I can't figure out if that. I could, I didn't recognize the silhouette of man with bush on back. I completely was like, so, yeah, that's a fucking cryptid. This ah! is um a guy with a bush on his back who's hiding and pretending to be a bush. He jumped um, up and... Is it a man or, or a, a bush? bush. <laughs> man! For, bush. For the record, it's, um, this is Rhys Darby. Um, ah, yeah. Okay. yeah I knew I recognised him. Yeah, What's he's really in, funny? He's in um, various things. He's in um, the next slightly more more popular um, or more viewed um, What We Do in the Shadows film. Mm. He's in that. He's currently, and this is a side note, but I really want to say it here, he's currently starring in Taika's new t- newest TV series, um, Our Flag Means Death. Our Flag Means Death. We're I need currently to watch watching that. Oh, on, season, season one is amazing, but it's like a lot of story. Season two, because they've now, been, okay, we've established this, we've had a season. Now it's just not much is happening and it's purely queer character development. Oh, so it's pure it's, fluff. Okay, that it's sounds pure amazing. Fluff. It's just, I think oh. basically, I don't know if all of the characters, a lot of the characters are, you know, on various spectrums of queerness. Um, Love it. However Love they it. describe themselves, I don't know. But like, it's just them showing all of their relationships developing. Mm. And it's just, it's a, we've, we're not, so we've not nice. finished it yet. There's a, we've a couple of episodes left, but it's, it is oh. an excellent second series if you're into backstory and fluff and character development. Honestly, I have watch seen, it. It's amazing. 
have mm-hmm. seen Taika Waititi as this character in that, and I'm like, oh, this is uh, going to be a problem for me. That's yeah, I, 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 really I, I, hot. I, 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 I sleep on my front, and I can't sleep after watching this thing. <laughs> <laughs> But Bruce anyway, had to chisel a hole in your fucking two thousand pound mattress. She's furious about it. Um, but anyway, that's just an aside that I want to mention at some point. So cool. go, go and watch Half Black Queen's Death. It's amazing. Yeah. But anyway, Reese yeah, Darby no, is is uh, part man, part bush. I I'm sorry. I I laughed out loud because when he jumps around, he's got a big beaming smile mm. and a huge beard. I went draw a map. Well, he introduces have... himself as Psycho Sam. Well, no, no, he <laughs> says like, like, "Oh, you've heard of like the tale of like, have you heard <laughs> yeah. the tale of like this the crazed the, bushman, the crazed bushman who no one's been able to catch for fifteen years? They call him Psycho Sam. No, well, 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 my name's Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, a, well, yeah. my name's Drummer Matt. I'm a drummer and all round uh, <laughs> maestro of music. Um... Uh, <laughs> So at this point, we get a bit more time context. They 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 say that they've been on the run for about five months. Um, Sam offers his um, filling out form based view of the world, and seemingly yeah. the, the main reason why he's hiding from society is that he doesn't like filling in forms and which everything. Is fair. Which is a very valid point. I hadn't even thought about it really, but because it's just yeah. you. Every time you everything do anything, you do, you're anything. Fill in a form. Uh, yeah, you do. You, you do. It's like, uh, especially in England, they, like y'all go fucking yeah. hard. And if you don't want to fill like out form, you... there's at least five forms of not yeah. filling out forms. I mean, yeah. filling out forms is the paperwork equivalent of queuing, so I can see why we do it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. He, he, he also, you do see some shots of him with like conspiracy theory books, and when they're wondering, like, oh, I wonder what he's doing out here. Like, is he weird? And then he puts like colanders on both of their heads, and it's like, ah, so the government can't read your thoughts. And you're like, ah, okay. You're like, okay. Yeah. Word. Um, also, does point out that, yeah, uh, robbing the hunters a little bit ago put them back into negative public can opinion. Can I just yeah. say. They rob the hunters a total of three times. And I'm like, they pull out the slides of their guns every time <laughs> and yeet them into the fuck. It's like, they will have had to replace at least, like, a few guns. That's not cheap. How much are these guys... Uh, this is just something I think about when I'm watching <laughs> I do movie. quite like that Sam also mentions, like, oh, yeah, some people... Basically, oh, by the way, heck, some people still think you're a nonce. And he's like, ah, damn it. He's like, god damn, I'm not a nonce. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he also suggests that the New Zealand rugby team is uh, yeah, aren't yeah. actually humans. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. To I want to. Fair, I don't, not sure. I want to hear that. To be fair, up, the honest. All Blacks are so powerful. I believe you. <laughs> if you told me that, I'd be like, actually, yeah. But like, they're not human. Complementary. They're, they're like humans. They're like super. They're like they're Superman. Yeah. They're from Krypton. <laughs> like, I fucking believe you. <laughs> they're all Highlanders, but they've like teamed up to just humble everyone at mm. rugby. <laughs> Um, Sam sleeps. Ricky writes another haiku and reads it to Hector, and it's Hector actually really, likes it. It's really, really cute because it's a yeah. it's a really sweet one. Yeah, it's about it's... them going on their adventure together, and he's like, uh, and and Hector's like, oh yeah, I like that one. I never heard my name in a poem before. Mm. I like it. Yeah, and then really you know, and then like uh, Ricky's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get they get chatting about Bella, and they end up. Ricky asks why why they couldn't have kids. And of, uh, kids of their of their own, and they get to talking about how it's it's another thing that just hits brutally home. It's like they talk about how it's yeah unfair that some people who ca- can have kids but they don't want to, and some people who want to and can't. And it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah that is, yeah, mm. yeah, very unfair. And there's um, that sad kind of moment where Ricky's like, "My mum didn't want me." And Hex like, sure she did. She would have loved you, but she probably couldn't have you because she had no idea how to raise you, or maybe she couldn't do it properly. So she, you know, did what she did because she loves you. And I'm like, yeah, that's, re- that's really yeah, thoughtful. Really nice, yeah. So many times uh-huh. this, this situation comes up. It's just so much judgment and things on yeah, on the mum. It's like, well, that's it, yeah. It was also but, like the little nice moment of. Um, of of um, Ricky being like, well, you know, Ash, you know what? I don't think she would she would have loved me. And um, Hector's like, oh yeah, she would. You're very likable. I think that's very yeah. cute because and you see Which that, that him, really resonates it, with yeah. Ricky mm. as well. For, for him, that's like the most outward appear like thing of emotion he's shown that hasn't been frustration. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, it's 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 nice. Yeah. 
Oh, at this point, I've wrote chapter 10. This is, this is the point where I decided oh, to start, yeah, yeah. start noting the chapters. Apparently. Chapter 10. War! <laughs> yeah, that, that's not underselling it. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Shit escalates. So, yeah. Ricky is sitting out outside the hut and he notices the SWAT team surrounding him. Oh, 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 I've got to mention, I've got to interrupt real, real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. So, go, I go, noticed go. at the very beginning of the movie where you see Bella, she's got a weird horn pendant. Right, it's like mm. a, it's her boars. Um, it's like tusk. it's like it's like a little boar tusk, and she's got that kind of like on a nice gold chain. Now, earlier on, I can't remember when it's first introduced, but you see you see Ricky wearing mm, yeah. like it's like a, yeah. a, he's made it himself, and it's like a big kind of boar horn. It's a lot bigger, and just he's like tied some twine around it, or whatever. It's really like ratchet, but he's like proudly wearing it, mm. like and you see him wearing it in like in like like Psycho Sam's hut, yeah. and I was just like. That's a nice little wardrobe mm. nod. I always look out for wardrobe mm. nods, which are in my my uh, post discussion. I'm going I'm to say things. something uh, controversial here. This is a very well made film. Yeah, it is though. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, um, sorry. Carry on, Matt. I, no, I didn't no, mean to. No, 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 no. No, I'm, this is one of my points. Though. I'm really glad that you're picking up on these things because I spent so much of the time sort of trying to summarise the plot and write. Oh, yes. oh yeah. dude. I didn't have the time to jot down those sort of things. So I'm really mm. glad that you're pointing them out. Um, I love noticing that. I mean, like, you know, film school will do that to you. No, it's just, it's something that I always try and pay attention to because, like, just the costuming department is, like, just that alone mm. is, there is so much, like, it just, it, and this isn't just in this movie, but in, like, the majority of movies or, like, anything where th- there is a design element involved, there are so many little nods or little mm. references or little things that they put in the design to point you in a certain way. Um, I'll talk about it in more depth yeah. after, um, but yeah. As a, as a nice also kind of tying into that, also it's Ricky that spots the cops before anyone else does. He hears them. He's yeah, he like, hears I them. can hear something he's, weird. He's got the knack, he says. He's got the knack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, um, and also, uh, he, while he's doing that, he's drawing yeah. uh, Bella and Hector and him. And the doggo. And the dogs together. Yeah, the dogs. Um, Which, obviously, Hector was drawing earlier, so there's a nice bit of mirroring of, yeah, of yeah. skills being passed on and not just the knack, like, mm. you know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I no, it's just, again, it's like this movie is like really yeah. well made. Like or someone something. thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he notices this. He runs inside, shouting for his uncle that he need to leave, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll leave. It's fine. We'll probably go tomorrow." Like, no, 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 we need to leave now. Um, <laughs> the panic filth are here. <laughs> they panic. They run around. They don't quite know what to do. Sam is not helpful. Um, <laughs> he suggests they go in their tunnel, but then it turns out he hasn't dug the tunnel yet. Um, Which is foreshadowed, like in the night before, like. Well, like one of the night, like the first night they stay there, because it's like he's like, "Oh, good night, Sam," and he's like, "Good night." I haven't, inst- I haven't installed that yet. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so he's really forgetful. Okay. Yeah. He also um, pretends to be dead. That doesn't work. Yeah, and we find exactly. out he's actually the reason why the cops found him because he'd uh, he'd yeah, um, he's fixed. been powering up um, <laughs> Ricky's Ricky's phone, Ricky's yeah. phone. so yeah. his phone was connecting it to was that pinging. fake cell tower. And he was he's yeah. like bragging, "Oh, I got your four bars," and he's like, "You fucking idiot." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's how they found them. Mm-hmm. Um, Finally, Sam does something useful, reveals... I, I didn't catch the name, but he reveals... I couldn't tell what the name is. Oh, either. yeah, I, I did write it down, but I... I, I, um, yeah, I, I just fell in love with it, because yeah. I'm like, that's that's a red U. It's like, he's called, oh. like, Br- Brenda or, or something. I can't remember it, it's, it's got a name. It's like Scrapper or something. Scra- yeah, it's, something like that. Yeah. I can't remember what its name um, is. But it's a, it's a... Buried under a bunch of leaves and twigs and things. It's a... It's a I wrote down pickup, but yeah, it's a Ute, isn't it? If you're in New Zealand, it's a Ute. <laughs> yeah, big red pickup um, truck. They're trying to. They're, they're worrying about where the keys are, and then it just you just hear it start, and it, you, you see Ricky's just like hot ride it. So <laughs> you're like, okay, so maybe some of the criminal things that he's been mentioned, you know, maybe some of them. Oh might god, be. <laughs> okay. Meet Crumpy, the hero vehicle from Hunt for the ah. Wilder People. A good keen Ute. <laughs> Crumpy. Yep, yep, are you really. keen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tupac's still around. They drive off. Tupac chases and jumps into the back. Ricky um, is driving. It should be noted. Ricky I love is how, driving. Like, this is yeah. like, and this this kid can fucking like. Yeah, he this can kid go. Can drive steady. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Um, and now we get a chase scene, which I was 
for the most of the way through this film, I was not expecting like a like you know they're being hunted, but a chase scene is something very different. It's, it's like it's an a car almost, chase, car chase, like, full on like Blues Brothers style almost. Yeah, I did. I yeah, wrote yeah, that in like, my notes. I say that like because they, they pass the hunters who start chasing them on quads, yeah. and then they like get to like a big open area, and there's uh, so many cops in the background. I could only describe it as a Blues Brothers amount of cops. Yeah. yeah. It's so um, there's, there's Illinois Nazis, there's <laughs> helicopters. <laughs> well, yeah. The be, well, before, for officer before there you is... see before you see the helicopters they do they have a bit of a chat and um they talk about taking it to the end which hector takes to mean until they run out of petrol ricky states that he wants to die in a blaze of glory and then puts his foot on the floor <laughs> mildly worryingly and then at this point yeah. yeah you see the helicopters there's a sort of it's not a tank because you'll tell me off if i call it a tank but an apc it's a tank it's an apc <laughs> it's an armored personnel carrier yeah um say it's a tank yeah <laughs> Turns out um, Paula from Child Welfare is in the top of this APC. Yeah, just being because fucking she's sci-fi. still just power tripping. And she's got a megaphone and tries to tell them to pull over. Um, My favorite part is like because they're like sidled up to the red Ute, and like Sam Neil is like you know that classic Sam Neil kind of like grouchy man side eye he gives mm. that is so he's like doing that while she's rocking up beside them in an APC and he's like I don't fuck you you don't impress me and <laughs> yeah. I'm like that is so powerful and he's also got a bit of a look of like hey I'm not in charge of this <laughs> not yeah, to do with not my- <laughs> hey the 13 year old's driving yeah. lady nothing to do with me <laughs> um turns out they're charging they're, they're charging down at the army there's like full yeah, on like troopers and more shit. Ah, you said tank. I don't know. Is there actual tanks now or is it more APC? Either way, yeah, there's, there's big military vehicles and troops and things all with their like full, you know, rifle, full kit, everything. Um, they decided to not chase them down. So they turn around, charge back at the police that are chasing them, drive straight past them. We find um, out they had the budget to total two police cars, but yeah. no more. So, yeah. not, so we don't get Blues Brothers destruction. No, no. not quite. They could but afford the, to the, smash the two The budget for this cars. film was about 67 <laughs> pence, I think. So, um, not quite. It was all but... filmed on a... Uh, like, like, well, it, it's not entirely, but the vast majority of the film was filmed on a single camera. Mm. So. Wow, really? Um, I did not pick up on that. That's incredible. They end up in the woods, um, and they're just bush. like driving things thing through the through the bush. Sorry, bush. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how he manages to not crash it is amazing. Um, there's a few times where Hector has to sort of say, tree, tree, and they have to dodge yeah. trees. <laughs> they end up driving through a fence into some sort of scrapyard. Through a corrugated thing. metal fence. Yeah. yeah. Um, and end up flipping the truck and landing on its roof. I've literally just written down, written down, rip to the ute and a sad face. <laughs> yeah, because I loved that fucking. Rip ute. to the ute might be the most Australian thing I have ever heard you say. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, close. Yeah. They all they all get out of the ute. Hector's leg is injured. He's he's not having a good time in this this trip with his legs. Um, everyone else catches up with him. Hector wants to give in, but Rick, Ricky wants to carry on. So they end up getting in a bit of an argument about that. Um, which Ricky, being a you know kid and not knowing exactly what's the best thing to do, starts yelling and accusing Hector of being a molester. Um, he does, yep. So Hector just goes, you know what, fuck it, just gives himself up, hands up. Um, he starts Meanwhile, to walk away. Andy, the, the cop notices one of the hunters sneaking around the back at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the at this point, yeah. one who won't wear like trousers, but will yeah, wear like. And you, you, talk, you talk about them like by getting new guns, but these are the sort of people. They're not hunting to survive. They're hunting because they want to spend their money on all of the hunting equipment. Well, and... looking at the rifles, like you, you can just see like the, the rifle differences uh, between like um, uh, hex rifles, which are very you know, they're worn wood, they're old, they're like. They're 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 obviously very well worn. They're more utility. Whereas you look at the hunter's rifles, and there's one's got matte black. One of them's like they've got some nice finishes on yeah. them. They're obviously well. They're a lot more new, which is like why I'm like that's going to be an expensive replacement. But also mm-hmm. like fuck them. They deserve to yeah. keep spending yeah. or wasting money. Um, Ricky points his gun at Hector and says, "Stop! You know, don't don't give yourself up." Um, the hunter is about to take the shot. You can see him aim and he's about to hit the shot. The SWAT person charges him down, knocks him over, and the hunter shoots towards the air. 
in his surprise, Ricky accidentally pulls the trigger and shoots H. And in... is it in the arse or in the upper leg? Or it's like it's like it's... the arse, yeah. yeah. It's not, not mentioned. The arse area. Um, he immediately looks shocked and apologizes. He obviously wasn't actually ever going to shoot, but this sound of this gunshot has made him hit the trigger. Which is which is a fun little thing that you kind of understand because like beforehand, um, as um, Hector's like saying, "Let's give ourselves up." Ricky fires a shot into the air and Hector goes, what did I teach you about gun safety? No, you don't do that. And then you see, because like, you always, unless you're willing to actually, unless you're ready to kill something, you never put yeah. your finger on the trigger. Exactly. So yes. that shows that, yes, he's, his trigger discipline isn't great because he's being emotional and he's not remembering. And you he's know, like, I just, A little touch like that. I'm like, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. That's just um, a nice touch. But in the midst of all this, the child welfare... Paula runs up and grabs Ricky. She ca- like grabs him in a headlock him. and is like, I've saved the child. Yeah. We did so good, everyone. We're so yeah. such a good team. Thanks to the army. <laughs> so they all get taken away in separate separate police cars. Hector taken away in a car, not not in an ambulance or anything. He's he's in a car. Mm-hmm. In a police car. Well, well they still think he's presumably, a Presumably presumably yeah. his ass bleeding out all over the seat. Yeah, for yeah. real. Um we cut to, to Ricky in a courthouse. We get a bit of a court montage of various people giving evidence. Him talking, you know, he's talking about the, the Terminator scene. No, she, yeah, she was like, and I said that he was Sarah Connor, and I said I was the Terminator. And then it's like, fucking, what does Ricky say? It's like, then I said that, you know, he's not, he's, he's a molester, but he wasn't a molester. It's, yeah. it's something like that. It's some inconsequential, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're sort of recounting the story, but it's mostly, like, just kind of innocuous Shit that doesn't matter. Of the yeah. story. <laughs> um, turns out he ends up being placed with um, Kahu and and, the fa- and and cool And her hot, hot dad. dad, yeah. Um, Hector goes to jail. You do um, also see um, when he's with uh, his new family, he has got a hot water bottle. But it's a so, green yeah. one. But it's a green one. Which is, a red a, again, one which is fair, fair play of the prop department because it's like, it's, it's, it which shows that it's a loving home, but it's different. Yeah. Mm. No. Very subtle I, shit. <laughs> fucking lo- like, love, again, almost I like, I love this is a good movie. movie. <laughs> stuff. Perfecto. Um, Hector goes to jail, but he's released it, he seems it says to be some time relatively later. quick yeah it doesn't really yeah. give you an idea of how how long it is but it's not not that long i think mm. i read somewhere it's meant to be like a year or something it, yeah, does, it feels like it's maybe um, does it say does it say later on i can't remember uh, uh ricky does say that he's been living with his new family for a year yeah so, oh yeah no he yeah. does yeah because yeah they, they finally re- reunite so hector's living at some sort of Rehabilitation yeah. kind of home for like, like older kind of yeah. uh, people who'd come out of prison. Like old ex-cons. Like yeah. 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 Like to, to help. The, basically, it's like a share house for him to get on his feet. Yeah. 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 So um, Ricky comes around the corner and tracks him down. And two you do packs see there, um, two packs there too. Yeah. Hector is uh, reading. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's like, there, he's just and learning to read. In, yeah. And he's like, he's, he's like reading out loud and struggling. Yeah. But like, it, that's like really, he's just having a, a smoke over, just kind of yeah. sitting there reading. And I'm like, that's. Yeah really sweet i don't know why that mm. just i thought that was really nice because when they yeah. have their argument like right at the right towards the start of the movie like it, hector's it very not reading he's very like like why would i need to read like well, so I'm, you know, I've got yeah, he, said, he says he, he says he can read he says he can like you know he doesn't he doesn't need to read a map he doesn't need to do this because he knows where he is and he knows what he needs to do yeah um, so it's like he doesn't see reading as a priority yeah, yeah. so so um, Ricky invites Hector to live with them, and this, that's when yeah he says he's been there. The part, what part of his deal was like he if he lived there and he stayed there for a year, he wouldn't get sent to juvie. Basically, that mm. seemed to be mm. the gist of of his conditions. Yeah. So he and stuck he's it like, out. He's like, oh, I I bought a camera so we could go bird hunting. Yeah, so we can go and take photos of that extinct bird. Extinct mm. bird, yeah. Well, it seems to be is it's, there's that, but there's also he ends up um, reading another haiku. Um, oh yeah, like but, uh, but Hector's, Hec- written, Hector's makes, written one. Well, he he makes it up like um, uh, on the spot, doesn't he? Yeah, and which I thought was very sweet. And and that seems to be the thing that sort of prompts him to okay, fine, they go. So they go off. Hector goes off to live with them. They have a big hug, and they go off hunting. <laughs> yeah. well, there's, there's 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 a nice thing where it's like you know uh, if you if you do come and live with us, like there's one, one condi- there's one condition. Uh, you got to let me call you uncle. Because throughout the movie, he's been like... Don't call me... Don't I'm call not your uncle. No, I'm not your uncle. Don't call me uncle. He doesn't yeah. feel yeah. comfortable about it. Mm-hmm. Even though he does it all the time, but he doesn't. And he's like, yeah, I can live with that. But it's like, but I've got a condition too. 
you're not allowed to shoot me. <laughs> Which I think that kind of goes without saying, and I think he wasted his one rule, but I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I can go off, King. Mm. That's fine. That's fine. Um, and then, yeah. They go off to, to hunt down this rare bird and have more adventures. But yeah. Well, whilst not having to be hunted. Hmm. I think that I think that was really sweet. Yeah. And that yeah. is the end, that of, is the the end of the film. Mm. I want to talk about my my massive compliments to the uh, the costuming department and mm. the kind of thing like that. So yeah, go for it. Um, like a very obvious kind of like thing to me was the wardrobe for both he- not not just not just okay. So Bella was like obviously she's she's a very kind of like very close to nature, but she's also very sweet and she just likes collecting things that are cute and to do with animals because she just likes them. But they're all very disparate and very kitsch and stuff. And like seeing that kind of mm. was very cute. Uh, she's seen uh, wearing like the uh, when you first see her, this. She's seen like, like a cardigan with a cat face knitted into it. It's like so so silly. It reminds me of something you'd wear, Matt, and I mean that in- entirely complimentary. <laughs> but like mainly, mainly with Ricky and Hector is kind of where it is because like you know you start off and like we mentioned obviously very early on he's dressed very garish. He's dressed very kind of like he's dressed like a cool gangster. Yeah. That you know because he's like the big thing is like oh yeah didn't choose to be gangster. The gangster life. Skug, was it Skug yeah. life? Was he was saying? Skug, Skuck, Skuck, yeah. Skuck. Skuck. Yeah, it's a term I'm Skuck. not familiar with. I'm. No, yeah, I, I don't had, know. I, obviously, but it's cool basically it basically it. means cool and gangster and stuff. Yeah. Um, and like you know, you see how he's just like he's garish, he's sticking out. You see, you know, um, and you see like just Hector just dressed as generic like bushman. Then kind of like once I've been on the run for a bit, um, you see, you know, because. Uh, Hector's using like he's wearing like a big um like a big cuddly like blue plaid jacket and you see that um Ricky steals one from one of the hunters and it's a red plaid jacket and mm. I saw that as kind of like they're starting to get on the same page now mm. but they are still they there's they 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 are finding elements to kind of meet each other in the middle with, but there's still some friction there, which is the different colours, the contrasting colours. Mm. Um but showing that you know they're still different. And then at the end, when you see them kind of going to walk off into the bush to look for the bird, um, you see that they're both matching in color palettes. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and also, like, um, Ricky's clothing is toned down quite a bit from the gangster kind of thing. He's still wearing, like, a hoodie and, a and like, um, like a, a body, like a, a wind blocker mm. and stuff like that. But it's, ma- it's, like, browns and kind of greens, which... Um, which um, Heck is also kind of matched where he's dressed a little bit nicer in the classic kind of Bushman woolen mm. jacket, which is like a bit newer. And it kind of shows that they've, they've obviously had an effect on each other. And they are still very different, but they are also in harmony with each other. Mm. And I thought that was so clever just with the costuming. Yeah, like mm. I, I saw I, I saw a thing where it was people talking about this, um, like when I was I was briefly just finding a few bits of information about the film. Yeah. And it was like um uh, a reviewer saying like it, it the, the the central thing being the relationship between the two characters is just so nice. These are two very deeply flawed people, but seeing them sort of affect each other is just really nice to see and it's it's just yeah it's really really well acted yeah they, like they the live and they so, learn yeah. very well together and honestly every everyone in here is such such good chemistry with the other actors it's just they're a joy to watch mm. um sam neil just let him be in everything he's amazing <laughs> I, I love i love grandpa chicken farmer because if you don't know sam neil basically just posts on like is it like instagram or something because he's just got a bunch of chickens and he just posts oh, nice. about his chickens all day. Okay. And it's like, that's really wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I thought, I thought there were many aspects of this movie that were pretty fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I, I, re- I really, really enjoyed this. This was a good shout, Matt. This is a good shout. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy I chose it in the end. I I wanted to choose. I, I started saying this about at the end of the, the last episode, but I wanted to choose choose a Tiger film because I really love basically everything he makes. Mm. But I am a bit worried that he's going to get... He's obviously he's massively mainstream now with doing obviously all the Marvel stuff and things. But mm. like, I feel like it's going to be like zombies and superhero films where it's going to get to the point where we're like, okay, I've had too much of you now. Yeah. And I'm worried that well, I'm... I, I don't think I mean, I'm not close to it yet, but I'm worried that it might happen. So I was like, let's, I want to watch one of them now while he's still like there. <laughs> and I want to watch one of the sort of earlier ones because it's a bit more, you know, he can put his, 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 his you know, personality or whatever into the big films, but you see it more in the early ones. Yeah. Um, so I was like, let's watch one that I've not. I've watched what we do in the shadows, 
it's a great film and I'd love to watch it again. But I was like, I don't think I'm going to have anything interesting to say because I've seen it so many times. Yeah, Whereas this I one, I've you. only seen once before and it was quite a while ago. So mm. I was like, I know I enjoyed it, but I can't really remember it. Let's, it's mm. a bit, it will be a bit newer and a bit more interesting to talk about. I'd honestly forgotten that it wasn't just a comedy. <laughs> I will or, say like, like the poster it's... for it, like set, like treats it like it, it, it like refers to it as being like, like comedic first. And whilst it is a, a funny, it is quite funny, a bits. funny yeah, yeah, bits, yeah, but I wouldn't call it like strictly a comedy movie. Yeah. Like, the... like maybe like a comedy drama. I, I, well, like it, it's a drama with with a lot of very funny jokes. Yeah, and like I think it's because there's a lot of comedy in it that is fairly bleak. Uh, mm. So mm, yeah, like, but yeah, um, I mean, it rains so much in New Zealand. You got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, uh, I, 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 in previous ones, I'd like talked about like how films did and stuff, and I think it's just simple to say, yeah, this movie did really well. People loved it, and um, it, yeah, yeah my, commercially my bit, did my really bit well of, as well. My bit of trivia for it, which was the other Lord of the Rings thing I mentioned earlier, as well as the the shot for shot bit of Lord of the Rings in it, which they acknowledged, <laughs> which is pretty dope. Um, this this was um, the highest grossing opening weekend of the New Zealand film. Mm. Technically, oh, wow. because while uh, this is uh, this is just on the Wikipedia, um, what, what's the actual thing? So it's it, it um it grossed like one point three million New Zealand dollars on its opening weekend, which was the highest grossing opening weekend for a New Zealand film ahead of an, uh, um, something else. Um, but and it was only like two point six million to make or something. Something so, which like for that. a movie but, is. Te- so there's a te- there's a note here. Half that on like the opening day. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a note here intense. that's saying, "Wow, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies ha- had obviously higher grossing opening weekends. They don't strictly meet the definition of a New Zealand film as per yeah. the New Zealand Film Commission." So well, I mean, that wasn't like I mean, this yeah. was like paid for by the New Zealand Film Commission. Yeah, which is why they some parts have... of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but... which is why they have so many like fucking aerial shots going <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gone like, on okay to... we get it you're like yeah. australia but you're better yeah, in every yeah. way we get it <laughs> but yeah it's gone on to be the highest grossing new zealand film not just opening weekend it's made yeah 12 million dollars as of whatever oh, wow. um that's that was it says down there on the top of um, wikipedia it said it's made 23 million dollars off a two and a half million budget so can't did all really right commercially. Uh, yeah i did all right i suppose um, mm, mm. Yeah. So, um, do we want to do like our final thoughts? Yeah, yeah have you sure. got some? Have you got some trivia? Have you managed to find? No, anything? no, it's not. I, I, I didn't really. Not, um, yeah, uh, on account of uh, doing this at the last second, I didn't really have a chance. Yeah, to, no, to, to look much up, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, this was this to... was Tyker's. I've got you know, just just one, just a bit of context, for people. This was Tyker's fourth sort of main film. Mm. Um, he did this after what we do in the shadows. Um, he did. Oh, yeah, okay. what we do in the shadows was a couple of years before this. Okay. Um, and then there's another, there's another one which is even more low budget. I don't know. This is what I remember called Boy, where he's he's actually in it as one of the as one of the characters a bit more. Um, mm. But yeah, this is the, the but this is only a year before. This is 2016, so it's only a year before Thor Ragnarok, which is you know in terms of budget and scale and scope, it's a it's little the bit op- different. Th- very yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. I I love Thor Ragnarok. Um, the second one, Love and Thunder didn't have quite the same as, as Ragnarok yeah. but that's because it's shite but... <laughs> he was trying to be diplomatic about it darling I love Ragnarok but oh man Love and Thunder felt like a, a, a perfunctory parody of, yeah. of Ragnarok yeah so this is so perfunctory yeah. Yeah, yeah nudging towards maybe a bit too much Taika yeah but then Ooh. I mean saying that like yeah like I said Our Flag Means Death um, is I wouldn't be surprised if Amazing. a lot of it was studio interference. So exactly, yeah. Like the, 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 the thing the, is, you can't really ever know. I mean, under- may, maybe he just he fucked up and he was like, "Oh shit, I need uh, the script done by tomorrow time." Oh, you know, and I've been yeah, like, I mean, I it's not know, kissing hot people on the yeah. mouth. All My day. understanding is, is that he never wanted to do the movie. So well, I mean, yeah, if your heart's like, not in it. You're not gonna. Mm. Yeah. yeah, big, 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 big movie studios. They're like, "Well, that works. Yeah. Let's do that bit more." But quite often, that bit more isn't what. You, well, they like that's capitalism. They do more of the bits it makes that you don't, jingle the yeah, keys exactly. Exactly. until like you exactly. get so fucking sick of it. I mean, look at the Marvel shit. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, we're talking about like um, Marvel or well, comic book movies, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, do you want to go? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Um, for my ranking, 
uh, for our official Your official final ranking and ranking our official ranking of every movie ever that yep. we will eventually get round yep. to. Yeah, we are never yep. going to die. So we'll be able to tell you um, what the uh, best movie ever is currently. Uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is the best movie in our ranking, yeah, but that... we only have two movies, and one of the and the other one is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, which so, honestly you know... fucking suck a bet, really. <laughs> Anyway, so, what are your um, final thoughts on Scrum? My final thoughts. I really, really like this movie. Uh, I I love the characters. I I loved how it was put together. Uh, the soundtrack was fun. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that. Just re- really, really solid movie. And I know this is like bias for having watched a movie that I liked a lot more than I was expecting. Not that I was expecting it to be bad, but I liked it so much more than I was expecting. That there is a recency bias here, <laughs> but. I do want to give it a nine. I think it's oh wow! I really, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Mm. Um, mm. It's it's just a really well made movie, and it 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 would feel like to put it down any lower would be giving it like would be would be doing it arbitrarily, you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, to me, so yeah, uh, I give it a nine. Um, give it a nine. Drama mutt. Drama mutt. I'm sorry. Drama That's mutt. like drama butt. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have a bad word to say about this, really. Obviously, it gets pretty dark in time, so... Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I love it. Like, it's the same as what Webb said. It's the, the, it's it's all about the, the um, character interaction between the two the two leads. Like, it's just... It's so good. They're so... Yeah. It's you so you likeable. You know, so like... so likeable, despite being dicks a lot of the yeah. time. And <laughs> Both they of feel them. so... The characters are written so incredibly well yeah. and acted even better. Yeah, and they have that great you know, chemistry. Sam Neill oh. is pretty, pretty famous, and you don't see him as Sam Neill; you see him as Hector. Like, yeah, yeah I, I didn't He's, until the end of the film. I did, and I was looking up stuff about it. I was like, "Oh shit, Sam Neill!" Yeah, obviously it was. Like, <laughs> I think obviously. I remember you telling me it was but, Sam Neill, and then I remembered like, it just before I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, I get to see Sam Neill. I'm happy because <laughs> I love Sam Neill. I think he's great." But yes, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. Go, you, um, oh, yeah, I'll jump a score. There. I've, I've interrupted you as well. Apologies. Um, yeah, no, it's great. He's easily a nine. If okay. we're doing if we're doing half scores, I'd go nine and a half. But I don't think we're going to be that granular. So let's stick with no. nine. Happy with that. What about you, Snipe? See, I'm kind of like I was going to give it an eight, but a very, very high eight, mm. like nearly a nine, because I think I gave Mask of the Phantasm a nine. I think you did, yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of like I take into account like rewatching it. Like, would yeah. I rewatch this? And I was like, I would, but nowhere near as much as I'd watch, rewatch Mask of the Phantasm. Dif- different movies. For it's different a, it, things, yeah, so. I mean, th- this is just the way my brain works. Mm. I think like there are so many elements to this movie that makes it so fucking good, and there's so much beautiful detail. So I'm gonna, I'm, it's gonna be an eight, an but eight. it's gonna be a very high eight. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm that's sorry. Fair. That's fair. No, no, no. Uh, I'm terrible. <laughs> okay, g- g- give me, sorry, give me a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Maths. I'm having quick to maths. do to do, do maths in Excel. Eight point six seven. What are we rounding to? Oh yeah, so this it's the this, same score. Oh, it's the as same score as Master of the Phantasm. Other <laughs> than eight point seven. Yeah, so I'd say 8. that's 7. that's fair. Again, it's a high. It's a high eight. Yep. So that oh, goes into so that's tying. That's, t- that's tying for the, the, the best movie we have seen Ooh, out of three ar- movies. Do we need an arbitrary tiebreaker? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I like it. I, the, yeah. But no, um this I thought this movie was really nice. I did. And yes. um again, like I was going into it, I was like, I knew it'd be good or at least entertaining because well, I mean, you know, uh because it's Taika Waititi. But like I was so surprised how much I enjoyed it. Because mm. I literally knew fucking nothing about it. I did mm. not look up at anything well, think, about so it at all. It's not, you know, it was, it was, it was we, we said it did commercially well, but it's still, it's not a Hollywood film. It's not a big no, no. film. And I don't think many people, not that I'm trying to be like, oh, I'm so cool for knowing, like, <laughs> not, not that at all. But it is yeah. not like a film that a lot of people have seen. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I honestly, and like, yeah, we will it. have, we will have spoiled it for you. But honestly, I don't think we've done it justice because it is just so... It's so well done, and everyone's so likable. And, and there'll be bits of all, like all the wardrobe bits, and all the various bits you picked up. There'll be loads of those in there. Yeah, I'm there'll be sure so much more I didn't notice because I was yeah, taking exactly. notes. 
Yeah, and exactly. also, you know, uh, this is this is the re, uh, the incentive to uh, whenever at the end of an episode we say what we're watching next, you go watch that mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, and then we want because we want to hear your scores. Please yeah. leave them in the comments. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. If you hated the movie, that's also fully mm. valid. We won't get mad at you. Jerome and Matt will come to your home, but like <laughs> he will physically manifest in your house at three a.m. and make you write. Taika Waititi is is a talented daddy man three hundred <laughs> times, but he was going to do that anyway. This is true. Yeah, I, yeah. That, is, that is just my evening activity. Yeah. <laughs> you physically manifesting in people's homes. <laughs> so. Uh, so, uh, do we have ne- anything else we want to say about this no. movie before we uh, announce what the next episode is? Hey, next will be? up, what have we got next? Next up, Wib, it's your turn. What are you going to make us sit through? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Oh, no. He laughs, but he doesn't disagree. <laughs> okay, right. So. No. Of the movies we've watched so far, like we've had it too good we've had two really good movies in a row mm. like like ones that that we were given high scores to and like you know they're both, both we all agreed we really liked and i'm glad yeah. that these are the movies that, that we've seen because i want you know i i personally want this series to be a bit of a mixed bag of what kinds of well, movies we watch well the thing is i never would have seen this movie otherwise exactly. and i've i've discovered a new movie that is just a really heartwarming yeah. nice movie this and that a, makes me happy i probably would have never got around to watching this if it wasn't for this podcast so mm. already great so i want to give you a movie that neither of you will have ever watched nor will ever watch if i don't make you okay okay but it's also something that i think is at least interesting that's good and i'm i'm not gonna say it's good okay but i am gonna say that i find it interesting okay so okay um the movie for next time is uh let me check the year it is the 1961 british kaiju film oh no gorgo I, are you sure that wasn't a politician? <laughs> As a, David William Gorgo. No, no. Who hated children how, how and do we wanted spell them Gorgo? to. G O R G O. Okay. It's on YouTube. Gorgo. Okay. Like I say, it's a it's a 1961 uh, British production of a ja- of like the kind of Japanese style of giant monster movie, so suit mation and all that. Okay, I'm warming up to it. Um, and I think it's, I remember watching it years ago and thinking it was quite interesting because of seeing another culture's take on a a very Japanese, uh, you know, genre. And also, uh, just, I mean, it'll be a while ago by the time you hear these episodes because we're recording them quite in advance at this point, but, um, Godzilla Minus One was released in cinemas and that is really fucking good yeah that movie is so fucking good y'all yeah um oh. we got to see it at the cinema uh very happy it did uh, it was able to do that um if you get a chance to watch godzilla minus one phenomenal film um yeah uh modern godzilla films that aren't the legendary ones because i really didn't like godzilla versus kong but like um yeah the the modern ones uh the japanese toho ones been pretty good. Uh, that and Shin Godzilla really fucking both great movies. Honestly, Shin Godzilla is probably one of the best movies. It, it's, it's a really good movie. I never want to watch again because it was really heavy. Yeah, I get that. Um, I get that. Which is a compliment. But yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um. So yeah, next time we'll be watching Gorgo. Uh, anyone nice. have anything else they want to say before we say goodbye? No. I, no. I just... I'm, okay. I'm looking forward to your weird available on YouTube because no one fucking cares about the copyright for it. <laughs> Not in the way that like no, copyright is a joke. It's like no literally nobody wants to claim ownership of Gorgo. Come on, if I wanted to make you watch bad um, kaiju movies, I could have made you watch Pulgasari, the North Korean kaiju movie. <sighs> we were talking about that the other day and it makes my brain hurt. <laughs> maybe later, maybe later. No. Anyway, goodbye everybody. Yes, thank you for listening and don't, <laughs> don't forget to give Gorgo a watch and also tell us your, your ratings and your likes and dislikes of... Uh, of Hunt for the Wilder People. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.